Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Pick Aside Podcast. My name is Joel Moran and I'm here with River Brown, Andrew Velez, and Joel Dells. And that's now episode 281. In this episode, we're going to react to the 76ers embarrassing Game 7 loss, preview the conference finals, and talk about the NFL schedule release. Now, this is the first time we're not going live in a while. In a minute. Long ass. And, Long yes. time. So I was about to say thank you to everybody that's watching and live. And I was like, oh, hold up. We're not, not going not live. Quite. So to update you guys, moving forward, we're not going to be doing live episodes only when it's warranted. If there is something big time that happens that we want to go live for, we will go live. But for the most part, our episodes will be pre-recorded and we'll still go live probably two times a month when we do these live reactions to things that, that happen in real time. But moving forward, we probably will just be doing pre-recorded stuff just because it's easier on the production side to do it that way. But how are you guys doing? Good, man. Had a great Mother's Day. Shout out to all the mothers out there. Absolutely. Uh, great game seven. We're going to get into that a little bit later. But um, I'm a little upset we're not doing the lives anymore, to be honest. I liked always looking at the comments. People always saying some funny shit. We had Drew's mom in here last time. Shout out to Rachel, of course. <laughs> Goat. Um, we miss it though. You know, good interaction with the fans. Yeah, the lives are always a good time. It's just a different type of energy that you ha- you bring to the, towards the show naturally. It's like now that we're not live, mood's a little bit lower. The energy's not really where it usually is. But obviously, once we get back into this more consistently, it'll be easier. I feel good. You look good, man. Thank you. Look great. Appreciate you. Dude, congratulations. Uh, uh, a little BR appearance? Facts. Shout out to Mr. Brown on Bleacher yeah, Report. I was like, she's just reading the comments. I'm fucking clicking you right there. Why are they violating you? Uh, on Bleacher did Report? You, did you see oh, my yeah. comments? I did, of course. You didn't You didn't acknowledge them, though. I know. I was kind of... I was saying uh, Jordan Poole and Moe's Moody for Ben Simmons. I see why I didn't acknowledge it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you mean they're violating you, though? Oh, no. They're calling me... Um, Bleach report. Uh, what they say, they the uh, the people they bring up there are horrible. So I think they think all of them are bad. Okay, so it doesn't feel that too. I don't feel too bad about all it. All right, now. all right. Because yeah, I think we all suck. So I think it feels people are gonna cook regardless. Oh yeah, most definitely. Know? But it was fun. It was Wait, cool. in the in the live stream comments, they were saying that or where? No, I was reading the comments on. It's on Bleach Report right now. I was like reading you can do a playback of it. Like yeah, I can. Like, do you have an agreed? I one tried right now to that you replay can read? it. Um, you can't replay it. I don't think so. I this was fucking. I was doing it like three in the morning. I, I did. Uh, I think I stole one of yours. I think I put up Gary Harris and Jonathan oh, Isaac. I think yeah. you're about you stole two of mine. What was comments. that one? Oh, you're talking about Dinwiddie comments. and I did Benny Smith. Stole two. You're yours. talking about any egregious no, comments? I'm saying, saying what were the comments that you saw? Somebody then? called me a jabroni. <laughs> okay, that's funny, <laughs> but nothing crazy. All right, all right, I did steal two of yours though. I respect that. I saw the dim. Couldn't that was think. the one. The dim with yeah. the uh, during. That was a screenshot, bro. But why do you keep trying to get rid of Moses Moody and all these trades? No, what happened was it was um it, the new CBA. It's so fucking hard to do anything with this okay. team. So I was just kind of throwing shit in the air. Okay. And um, I'm not giving up command. I was gonna so. say I saw that trade and I was just like, Riv would do this. No, I, I, I said I wouldn't do none of them. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But I got a job know. to do. So yeah, I had here. to cook up some hypotheticals. So you yeah. know, it was cool though. That's well, I, saw, I saw one for Jalen Brown. You're Lost. ridiculous. No, no. They told yeah. me, throw that up there. So I was like, let me oh. see. BR said to do this one? No, no, no. It was the people the in the comments. comments. So I was like, let me see if it actually works. And it actually fucking oh, works. Sick. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> That's about yeah. as far as you're going to go. No, I would. I don't Colin worry. Coward started that, I'm, I believe. Yeah, that, yeah, that was stupid. Maybe the uh, Golden State, right? Yeah, it's been. What yeah. do you say? I'm Paul sure and Wiggins? Would, I think he just has like yeah. a love for Western teams. It was like Paul Wiggins for Brogdon and JB. It's like, why the fuck? I was going to say, the Celtics are getting fleeced. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, they're about to go to the finals. I don't <laughs> think they would do that. Personally. That's Fleece. when we're down, what do you mean when down three, two. I said what I said. Fleeced? Yeah. Because give me the, Brogdon over Poole. He's the valuable, most valuable player in the trade. My Who? Favorite. Andrew Wiggins. Okay, stop capping. <laughs> when the last time they was on the scene, what I seen. Uh, last time they were on the scene, Wiggins what was you seen was him Wiggins getting was blown off the court by 20 points. No, I'm saying That's what that last we saw. I was saying in the finals with JB. So but that isn't the last you've seen. No, I was talking about the trade. The people in the trade, the last I've seen from them. G- Against each other. Against yeah, each other. Wiggins was the best. He's getting real yeah. specific. No, yeah, you of know, course. He has to. We, we only play them in the playoffs maybe once a year. You know? Uh-huh. Yeah, you know. Well, I think this is a good time to announce that tomorrow we're going to be on Bleacher Report. In fact, we are. For the draft lottery. Yes, yes, yes. So we'll be going live on there. Uh, unfortunately, they told us it can only be three of us. And since D- Dell's participated to Dell's not be out. in it. I mean, I'm, I'm upset, bro. You know, I'm really, <laughs> I've been locked in on, on the NBA draft, all the prospects. I have like 40 on a Good Google cap. Duck. You know. Scout report. I've seen it. It's <laughs> very it's, it's, it's impressive. It's it's impressive. very high on um, Kobe Bufkin. Yeah. Big fan. 
<laughs> who was the guy I did in when we did the draft for just the March Madness teams? What the fuck did you do? You were like, that's a good fucking pick. Co- was it uh, Cam Whitmore? I was about to no. say Kobe White. He, um, he did so much Xavier, good. the player from Xavier. Oh, Kobe Jones. Kobe Jones. And I was yeah, like, I was close. sneaky. Yeah, I was like, that yeah, was Kobe a good Jones. One. No, I, I knew, it, I knew it, Kobe first name. Yeah. yeah, Kobe White, Kobe Jones. Yeah. All I'm saying is that for you guys to be in tune because tomorrow we will be live on Bleach Report on the wrap. So if you guys want to go there to tune in and, you know, bring our audience over there so we don't have so many negative comments like Riv received. Because <laughs> Riv received all negative comments for what? I don't know. doesn't deserve it. I don't know what I mean. Way too handsome. Are you guys going to do it in the studio or from home? Are we from I'm guessing Canada? from home. It could be from home. I would not mind if we did it from here. I don't care. Way easier. I live five minutes away now. so That's facts. doesn't really bother me. If you do, I come over after. Link up for the Lakers game. You're never at the building. Like, I was going to say here if you guys did here. Yeah, but you, you're never at the building. Every time I, I was text saying you, this I'm Joel's just saying in general, home. every time I text you, yo, oh. downstairs? No. I'm, I'm, anyway. That has nothing like to do with him week. coming no, in. No, it just, it just, not, it just, no, it just, all, it just um, dawned on me that he's never at the building. Why, well, you want to have a watch party there. at the crib? He told me he did. No, bro. He, I he, spent half the week there. He's mentioned this to me. He actually can't stand you because you don't link up with him. I see Riv kind of often. You're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good liar, but I get like, it. I've seen you at least three times. I've seen you two times a week. The same as them I'm and them. Usually once outside of that. You saw me uh, when I came home from Florida the other day? Didn't count. Whatever, dude. <sighs> Fucking bastard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get into the first topic of the show. And we're not going to wait to get into it, does. We're going to talk about Game 7, first let's topic of the show. Let's do it. That's what we're going to talk about. 76ers major collapse. And to be fair, let's give a team here some credit. Oh god. The Knicks were the only team to put up a fight in an elimination game. We put up put up a fight. The Suns got blown out the water, the Warriors got blown out you the also water. Played the worst team. The team you picked to go to the finals. Yes. But it's still the worst. You played the worst team. But you have to keep going to the finals? Uh Ooh. troll purposes. Oh, I thought you were talking about the the Warriors. That's wicked. What? The Heat going to the finals. When did you say that? When the fuck did I say that? Oh, I think I said it on the. Uh, when I said it, when did I Playback say it? Maybe was it no, was that the at home yeah, yeah, reaction? Yeah, and I was like, uh, the Heat going to the finals. I was feeling geeked up about it. Now the Celtics beat the 76ers 112 to 88. Tatum had 51, 13, and five. And, and Tatum, why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> they fucking suck. Bro. Yeah, bro, they were really bad. Oh, they were man. so bad. One of the worst performances I've seen in a closeout. Oh, well, listen, Dells, for one. 51 points, most points ever in the Game 7 history. He just oh, beat out Steph Curry, who did it yes, sir. in the first Two round. Of the Kings yeah. had to yeah, show him up for last year. But, but you know, the apology <laughs> forms have something. to be off of Tatum right now, <laughs> Uh You're at the top of that list. Oh, weird. You're the most disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> you call them the under champ. I was, what, what do you call them? I was just being under, under king. Under king. Under king. That's what it is. Can, can you imagine it? the hey, first? Boom Fantasy, he got his right. They, respect you two me. folded. I, 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 I helped Well, I said that they were going to win regardless. You said under for Jason Tatum. I'm the only one that picked over. Say, I said like 28. I wasn't expecting fucking 50. Yeah. You, know, no. you know what's hilarious is that it actually not hilarious. It's sad. Is I took the under on Tatum. Of course, he rushed for 50. <laughs> Earlier in these playoffs, in the first round, I took the under on Butler when he erupted for 56. No way. Yeah, so I've taken Keep under taking on two the players. Keep taking the under. Bad luck. Keep taking Tatum. But that's I'm the thing. That, that when you go under. On my knees begging you. They have historic performances. When you, when you go over, they... They always go under. <laughs> I think you just have to respect Jason Tatum and the type of ball player he is. Tatum has been the under king this year, though. I know, but when you need him the most, what does he do? No, he showed up. up. He's a prompt time player. There's no respect doubt. There, there's no doubt. But mo- most people are talking about this collapse the Sixers had because then beat 15 points, eight rebounds, five for 18, and James Harden had 9.7 assists <laughs> and was three for 11. <laughs> I'm sorry. This guy tells <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to talk some ball, man. I'm on my know. knees begging. <laughs> Joel Embiid averaged 33 in the regular season and 23.7 points per game in the playoffs. The biggest drop-off by an MVP ever. And he's the first MVP to not make a conference finals in NBA history. He does still have time to do that. But as of right now, he has he's not He's the only it. one. Yep. Uh-huh. So what do you think about this collapse from Joel Embiid and also the comments he had after the game that some people think, you know, was taken out of context. Some people don't think it was. If if you're looking at the uh, I can't win alone, James James and I can't win alone, that was taken out of context. The whole quote isn't bad. I mean, you know, to be fair to the other players on the Sixers, Maxie showed up for the most part. Tobias had a good series, I thought. 
Um, you know, you had even PJ Tucker in the first quarter had 11 points, right? He had two or three threes in that first that was quarter, like plus 50,000. Yeah, right? Rob was <laughs> Rob was helping, and PJ Tucker was hitting the shot. So the reason why the Sixers lost this series wasn't because of the role players; it was because of Harden and Embiid, right? Embiid, there was really not a game this whole series. I felt like he was the best player on the court. Harden, he won two games single handedly. But those five other games were all stinkers. Like, he was terrible. And even in this past game, in Game 7, there was multiple times where he had a straight line to the rim and there was nobody in the paint. He was passing out to guys on the perimeter. And I was wondering why. You know, of course, Rob Williams there now. Horford could protect the rim, but why isn't he going up and trying to finish? We saw in moments this series that he was able to finish at the rim. For whatever reason, this Game 7, he wasn't able to do that. He was very passive. He wasn't aggressive. And his shot wasn't falling. Um, so for the Sixers, they're going to have a lot of changes. I think Doc gets fired. I think it's inevitable at this point, but I don't think it's fair to just point at Doc and be like, he's the reason they lost. I feel like a lot of people are going to do that. A lot of people in general do that with coaching where a team underperforms and they just go and blame the coach because that's the easy thing to do. But if your MVP is playing at an MVP level and James Harden was playing like he did in the regular season, there is a strong chance they get past the Celtics because there was multiple games this series where the Celtics just didn't show up. You look at that uh, that game five at home where they got blown out. Um, there was times in the clutch where they where they folded. That game four in Philly once come to mind. They have that big comeback. Then Jalen Brown helps off the corner off Harden. They hit a big three, win the game. So the taking the the series was for the taking and Philly didn't show up. But to the Celtics credit and to Jason Tatum's credit, who had a terrible, abysmal first three quarters of that game six and then showed up in the fourth quarter of game seven, outscored Philly by himself, kept that energy into game seven, into Boston, had his best game of his career, one of the best single games in Celtics history, dropping 50 in a game seven, being able to get past Philly. And he needed that. He said that to Embiid after the game. He's like, yeah, I needed that because even the whole series, he was having his ups and downs. Even before game six and game five, he started off really slow game four. I think he started 0 to six to start. But when he first, that first quarter, he got past Embiid, had a dunk. And then the second shot took was like, in the post against maybe it was Melton or Maxi one footer mid range just look look like vintage Tatum that he kind of got away from this season where it's just been all threes all layups and dunks but he was getting to the mid a lot he was in his pull ups his post ups and I think he only hit one three that entire first half and then eventually that second half um you know that high pick and roll game he was hitting his pull up threes which really changed everything but for Philly a lot of changes but you can't just blame this on Doc their best players didn't show up uh they they they. Had seven different defensive coverages in the second half for Jason Tatum. None of them worked. Joel Embiid, Tatum just absolutely destroyed. Fried him. Hunting him. Bad. Him. I mean, like, and Embiid's yeah, a great defender. Points yeah. Embiid. Embiid is a great defender. This is, you just, Tatum just had his day. Um, you mentioned it. it. Is he, though? Uh, On the Embiid? perimeter, he's I mean, not. he's a great rim protector. Let me say because that. Because I think Embiid, I think there's a misconception about Joel Embiid. He's an elite rim protector. Mm. But he can't guard in space. He cannot. And it He's showed. Big, though. That's the shit that kills me when it comes to defense and how sometimes we evaluate guys unfairly. It's There's not these freak athletes. They just don't grow on trees that can just guard the perimeter and then also on top of it be just unbelievable rim protectors like on top five of guys, it. Maybe. At most. At most. Like, even Giannis gets slack for it because in in on one-on-one in space or around the perimeter – Giannis is not that good, but of course he's one of the league's best shot blockers. That's how we should evaluate these big men. They're not as they're not as mobile. They're not as athletic to be able to do both of those things. And and only a, a handful of guys in the league can do that. So I feel like it'd be unfair to say he's not a good defender outright, or he's an overrated defender just because he, he's just not mobile enough to defend in space. Well, they say that about Rudy Gobert because he wasn't able to defend in space, but, but he defends in space better than Embiid. But again, I would not call Rudy Gobert a bad defender or you know underrate his defense at all just for the fact that he can't defend in space. Or so many people do. Great, again, and a lot of those people should watch basketball more. Mm. This is the thing, and this is, this is why I bring it up, because all year long – when it came to the MVP conversation, to to like just to put this out there, this is a fair point. What you're gonna say? I betted on Embiid to win MVP because I saw the trend, and I, I think that a lot of M- a lot of Embiid winning MVP was due to unfair critiques of Jokic, whether it came to playoffs where Embiid was never better than Jokic Ever. in the playoffs, even even then, mm-hmm. and when it came to defense. Correct. And, and now we see in a playoff series that Embiid got torched. I mean, they they changed the defensive coverage on Tatum because 
for one, they tried different defenders. It was Melton, Tobias, P.J. Tucker. Then they tried switching on screens. They, they had Embiid play up more, and Tatum was torching him. 24 points on, like, 80% field goal. If that's Jokic, he's getting killed for that. And it wasn't just Embiid's bad offensive performance. It was that he was also the worst defender, arguably, on Philadelphia in Game 7, too. But are you saying that because Jason Tatum fried him? Yeah, he did fry him. No, I'm, but I'm asking you, is that why you're saying I mean, that? No, but that's, you that's expect, happened to the Joker before, too. can't expect too. Embiid to oh, do yeah. that. can't expect Embiid to switch on Tatum in the perimeter and stop him. Listen, Tatum was hitting his shots. It's also, like he it's, was it's just not, having it's his not even, his career. He was hitting shots, but it was also easy drives with no resistance to the yeah. basket. Sometimes his effort isn't there. I mean, like, the game was close in the first half. You know, like, the game was close really in the third close. quarter. We were down yeah, it just, seven in the second In the third, quarter. they just... 55 to 55. Boston, and the on the Boston just went on a run. Boston just got hot, found that Boston groove. And you you go back and you watch the tape. I mean, Philly missed a lot of good shots in that third quarter. They, they just missed a lot of really good shots, shots that they normally make. So it was tough for them. They was missing shots. Boston was hot. They was firing. It was in TD Garden. That's a tough place to play in. Not many people have gone in game seven TD and won that game. So that's especially somebody, a team where your MVP has not played like an MVP at all. You're typically not going to win that game. Um, just to talk about the series, though, this is probably one of the few series you can say, well, if our MVP plays like an MVP, we probably win the series. Like, James Harden, Joel Embiid, James Harden gives you those two games, but, like, if you look at the series, they won three games. One of them Embiid didn't even play in. So, realistically, that's a game you look at, and you're, this is a series you look at. Like, we stole one, game one, and then we had, we was up 3-2 in game six in Philly. This is a series we 100% could have had, and they got to look at this situation like, damn, this is a team we really had. To, there, there, there's no blame in Doc for this one. You can't sit here and throw this on Doc. He can't be the only scapegoat. You got to look at Embiid. You got to look at Harden top to bottom. Even Maxi, even P.J. Tucker, you know, they were all good. But you got to start looking at these two stars. Like Harden, out of those two, out of, for the most part, out of those two games, he wasn't that good. Embiid wasn't really that good all series offensively. and You needed that from him. I know Al Horford's a great defender. I know Rob Will's a great defender. I know they threw a lot of looks at him. But as an MVP, you have to be great. At one point in the series, he wasn't great at all. So I think this really, for me, comes down to Embiid. And even his comments weren't that bad. I know he was talking about it in the post. No. It really was. Like, he threw the little joke at the honest. It was cool. It was funny. Like, ah, oh, we need a I little laugh at it. But it wasn't that bad. He did say... You know, we have to be better. He, you know, and to the, his credit, he, he, said, he I, he blamed, he, I he, have he, to be He blamed better. himself. He took accountability. And that's what we wanted. We wanted to see if he was going to blame somebody this year. You know, he said me, and then he went down and said the role player is James Harden. So he took accountability, and that's all you needed from him. You don't need the extra nonsense outside of that. So I thought his post game was fine. But this is another year of him not making a Eastern Conference Finals. And it's getting bad. He's 30, if I'm not mistaken, and nah, 29. He's 29. 28 or 29. Body's 40. His yeah. he he's Body's 40. Yeah, he's you know, he's big. You Smart know, he gets hurt a lot. 20, 20, 20, 29. 29. He said down the stretch he was No, yeah, and beat's a big guy. He gets hurt like Wow, he's aging fast. I yeah. thought he was younger. No, yeah. well, his he birthday? missed the first 3 years of his yeah. career. Yeah. When's his birthday? March 16th, so he doesn't turn 30 yeah. until so next year. Middle of next year. So <laughs> Clock is ticking, and Harden's getting older. We don't know if he's going to be there next year. I don't know how many roster moves. You said it like they need to make major changes. I don't know how many major changes they can make. Maxie's about to get a bag. DeAnthony Mellon's a free agent next year. Harden's really Tuck the only move. That'd be a sign. PJ Tucker, we don't know if he's coming back. He's decline. up. To, he's forty. Isn't he on a? Two, he has two more years on his deal, doesn't? Harden, he can not play no. option. Um, PJ. PJ Tucker, he can retire. I was, he's true. Mad old. True. I'll be honest. Respect to PJ, but bro, they have him fighting for his life out. If so, Harden leaves too, I, I see a hard. If I see it, I don't see. I don't see the also. point of like what what keeps him beating Philly. If Harden leaves, if Harden's gone. They get a coach he likes. That's an interesting Harden. point. And the idea that Maxi elevates. Because you know what? I, I'm actually leaning <laughs> I'm leaning towards saying that Embiid won't be in Philly. I think that James Harden is not going to be back in Philly, especially after the comments post game yeah. where they asked him about his like nobody relationship with Doc Rivers and James Harden said it's just okay. I felt like that was a red flag. And all these reports all season long about James Harden being mm -hmm. linked to Houston. Listen, <clears throat> I love Harden. You're you? supposed to, you're I do. I don't believe it anymore. Hey, we got the jersey. You're I don't believe it anymore. You're supposed to be bought in 100% on winning a championship in Philadelphia this season and all year long. Those leaks are not coming from nowhere. Those leaks are coming from his team. Your camp for sure. And, and and for Woj to confirm all those rumors to be true today by saying that 
like it's serious, that he's serious about going back to Houston is a bad look. It doesn't feel like he was bought in on the season. And Joel Embiid, I don't think Philadelphia, if they lose Harden, they're not going to be good enough to win a championship. No. And he has to go to a place that has a foundation that can lose him for a stretch of the season and still win games because the biggest problem to this point is that he's not healthy when he's in the playoffs. That's the biggest knock on Embiid. Even in these playoffs, we can knock his drop-off all we want. He was playing through an injury that was a four to six week injury. He came back in two weeks. I'm not knocking his I'm not I'm not giving him an excuse. I'm just adding context to what he went through. And I think the perfect situation for him is possibly the Miami Heat. I think they are one player away from actually being a, a team that I at least I look at as a team that can win it all. And Joel Embiid, his history with Jimmy Butler, maybe there's a trade there with Tyler Hero and Bam Adebayo to go get Embiid and you pair him up with Jimmy Butler and the Heat culture, I think that is the perfect situation for Embiid. Am I wrong or... I wouldn't trade Bam for Embiid, personally. Uh, am I wrong or... You mentioned a situation for Embiid that would be beneficial if he misses time, they're still able to win games. Wasn't that Philly this year? For a stretch. I mean, yes. when Embiid misses game, they had a significantly better record. That, you know, that, I'm not saying compared to when he plays and when he doesn't play. I'm saying when he doesn't play, they have a very positive record. If you could look that up for me, that's just off the top of my head. I'm, I'm almost positive that's right, though. So I, what better situation? How much better does it really get unless he's stacking the deck and, and teaming up with another top 10 player? 11 and 5. 11, 11 and 5. five. Okay. That's okay, that's, that's, more than, that's what I'm saying, players, yeah. Man. So without the MVP, you went 11 and 5. And... We talk about situations, and you mentioned also about Harden, whether he was bought in this season. We spoke about it all season long. We spoke about it a couple of weeks ago, that this was one of Harden's best seasons, adapting to a, a different role, one of the most efficient that he's one of the most efficient shooting seasons that Harden's ever had as well. We do understand that he's taking less shots, but he's maximizing his opportunity. He's become one of the best playmakers in the game, a top three playmaker. Uh, one of the best point guards, non-point guards, whatever you want to call James Harden. He just understands how to adapt to a role because, again, how great he is at basketball. But we can't look at it from now that these reports are true that he wasn't taking this season serious. I would not look at Harden at all and think that. This year, all regular season long, Harden was reliable. Yes, he got hurt a little bit towards the, the beginning of the season, but when he came back, you really saw the Sixers start to play a, a much higher level of basketball. And we also spoke to how much Harden how much Embiid benefits from Harden's play as well. And, and so I don't want to look at, at these reports from Harden and now start to say that Harden wasn't committed. He simply was not consistent enough in this Boston series. Game six, we, we talk about uh, situations where this series was for the Sixers to take and, and move on to the next round. Game six, Tatum's having one of the worst starts to a, a game any superstar could have. It's within reach. There's your opportunity. Tatum's playing poorly. What happened the last time we saw Tatum play poorly in a series? The Golden State Warriors were able to capitalize. They won the series in six. Here it is, your opportunity. Game six, Tatum's not playing well at all. Down the stretch of the fourth quarter, you're not aggressive. That being said, Embiid's not aggressive, not dominating the basketball, really not trying to assert himself into that fourth quarter. Instead, now you allow opportunity for Jason Tatum on the opposite side to really take this game and, and steal steal a win from the Philadelphia 76ers and a force and force a game seven in TD garden. It was near impossible for them to win three games on the road, especially in an environment like TD garden. That's already hostile as is. It was loud to win two games was an achievement. That's something that if I'm the Sixers, I can hang my hat on. Hey, we did something that not a lot of teams could do, but that's not good enough because you had a chance to close out at home, especially with their best player playing like garbage for three quarters of the game, and you weren't able to maximize that opportunity. It's simply on the players. And I can understand what you're saying, Riv, that, that you're trying to take a little bit of pressure off Doc, but how many games in a row are you going to lose where you have an opportunity to close out and you don't? He's part of the problem. You look at both of these, both of these situations, both the coaching and the players, and think you have to be better. Again, he tried. Game seven. He threw seven different coverages at Tatum. Tatum just had one of those games. Fine. Game seven, I'm not looking at and saying, hey, Doc, it is what it is. I'm looking at game six. That was your opportunity to take this series, move on. You simply couldn't. Once you saw it go to game seven, you knew this. Is, you knew the Celtics weren't losing. So it's going to be interesting to see what Philadelphia does. Embiid, 
the biggest thing is just him staying healthy. You cannot have it that your best player every single season, this se- this part of the season comes around, you can't rely on him. You're not going to tell me that doesn't matter with the James Harden thing. I think it matters. I think it matters to somebody on your team you're looking at it, and I'm thinking you're not going to be here next year. I, I think it matters. Going to what Vegas are you talking in about? between rounds one and two, maybe that bothers some people too. Doc even said that that was okay. He well, said it was okay because Doc he came, he went to Doc. He's like, "Yo, is this okay?" And Doc said, "Go ahead." And I don't want to, and I don't want to have people mis- misconstrue this. I don't. I'm not saying Harden didn't take the season serious. I'm not saying that at all. I thought that's what you said. That's not what I said. I'm not saying he he took the season serious. Of course, he's a professional at the end of the day. But that's like if we're working on something together and then we're hearing rumors constantly that, hey, you're leaving. Like, you're leaving us. And now to end the season, we're f- finding out those reports are true. It feels like, and especially with a championship team, very rarely in NBA history are championships won by a team that is built one year in. We have some anomalies like the Raptors, but they already had a foundation before Kawhi went there that it was a plug and play. But ra- very rarely does that happen. You have to build chemistry for years and then get over the hump and go through these adversities as a team together. And when your teammates look at you and they're like, hey, this is a one-year thing with you. You're not staying here long term. It just doesn't feel like he was all the way bought in on being in Philly long term. That, But I feel like now it's two different conversations now because – Yes, that's a fair statement. He wasn't all the way bought in, but that doesn't take away from everything that he did this season. It, starting to question whether or not that's the reason why Philadelphia wasn't able to have hey, hey, success. Listen, Harden was great in a regular season. Two great. two great games in the second round. After that, he was miserable. He was. In totally. game seven, he was miserable. As much as the is going to get knocked, Philadelphia has two MVPs on his team, two scoring champions on his team. And the other guy in Harden... Had nine points. I'm with you. In game six, he Max was still playable too. The majority and of the and I want to I want to mention this because Embiid played bad, Harden played bad, Philadelphia really did not show up as a team, even though most of it is on the stars. I, I want to credit the Celtics because definitely the adjustment they made game six is what turned around this series. I'm with you. Starting Robert Williams instead of Derek White is what turned around this series and limited their offense. It shut the offense down. If you want to give critique to Doc Rivers and not adjusting the offense. I can understand it. Defensively, he did what he can game seven. He tried. But number one, Al Horford was able to guard Embiid with help. You now have Robert Williams in the back line, and that made Embiid hesitate and settle for a lot of jumpers. And Ugly ones. Horford, I was going to say, because we've seen him beat all season long. That elbow yeah, jumper's yeah. been his bread right. and butter. Horford it wasn't did a great there. Job, a great job of not fouling, too. And Horford... He, I think he forced them beat to shoot 44% yeah, from yeah. the field, yeah, which, yeah. you know, it's not had, his normal efficiency. 80 point, it was around 80 points on 80 shots. Yeah, so he was hesitating on these drives. And number two, they shut down the pick and roll. What worked all series long was Harden getting these switches. And if he didn't get the switch, it would be a bounce pass to Embiid at that elbow jumper mid-range, and Embiid would get an easy look. Well, the adjustment the Celtics made is that Horford now started staying home on those passes. So he didn't switch on to Harden. He would stay on and beat. So now that elbow jumper, that pass gets taken out. And Harden had wide open lanes to the basket, yep. but saw Robert Williams yep. and was like, I'm not testing him. I wouldn't either. I was going to say, I don't blame <laughs> there him was, there. There were some that were still wide open. And the Celtics, these, are, these last two games, games six and seven, are the best defense they have played. All season long. I think round two, I think they're top two defense in terms of teams that are still mm-hmm. remaining. So credit to Missoula because Missoula's gotten a ton of shit over these la- this this round specifically, even that Atlanta round because people weren't expecting that to go six games. I predicted, I think, four or five. And Missoula was, you know, at the front of that because it is a new coach. This team that just went to the finals. Like, why are you going to six with Atlanta? Why is it taking this long to get over Philly? But that change, and the players mentioned too, like how much it matters having Rob out there, how much safer they feel guarding on the perimeter and Al Horford having him to help with Embiid too. So he was great. And then shout to Jalen Brown too, who bit of a... Not his play's never been rocky this season, but in terms of his relationship with the fans, his relationship with Boston this season, I mean, we hear all the rumors that go around. We had even a topic on it a month or two ago, but I think his ability, not ability, but what he said after game six, saying we need the fans to come have that energy because the energy's been okay. We need you to come and be the loudest you have been and how just 
ecstatic he was for Tatum in that game seven. You saw them embrace after game six and game seven. He's hyping the crowd up when Tatum's going crazy. And he even tweeted out saying how the energy is shifting. It, it probably doesn't matter a ton, but I think just that mindset flip from your second star who I don't want to say he hasn't been committed long-term because he hasn't said one way or another, but this kind of feels like that switch for Jalen Brown where he's like, this is going to be my home for the next four or five years. Let me, let me embrace this team. Let me embrace the city of Boston. And I feel like that had a big part into how that, how this game seven switched when he got elbowed in the face by Harden. And then from there, you know, the, the run went crazy. An important thing to mention too, is the reason why Robert Williams was able to camp in the paint is because he was guarding PJ Tucker and the reason why P.J. Tucker's scoring went up in Game 6 and Game 7 is because they were books. leaving him wide open. <laughs> he gets left wide open a lot, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, hey, first quarter, player. he was hitting. It's been like that he for had a 11 decade. points. I was like, no yeah, fucking way. Yeah, he was way. hitting, but oh, the thing it's only going to last so long. Harden was having these open drives, yeah. and instead of him settling for mid-range jump shots or floaters to now make Rob Will pay, because, of course, testing him at the baskets is not a yeah. efficient way to score. <sighs> Even when he would drive, there would be two Celtics helping on those, and they would force Harden to make these passes to the corners, and they would live with the Result. results yeah. of them. I just, so yeah. shutting down the pick-and-roll game, shutting down and beat in isolation is why Philadelphia couldn't score. Their, their offensive rating in Game 6 was an 86 offensive rating when Horford and Williams both shared the floor together, which was 19 minutes which is a putrid offense. Not even the worst offense rating in the league is this bad. And that's what the Celtics held them to. I just think it's funny because now the whole, oh, the, the, like the Embiid stands of the world now kind of sit in silence because they were ready to bash the Joker all this time. And he's been a top two performer Unreal. since he's, since game one. It's been OD. And now yeah. the, Embiid hasn't been that good this postseason. Now you just lost in the second round. It's kind of funny how the, the They got to go haters, back into hiding. The haters definitely honest. get They're stopped. I, I definitely like that for them. It They're really cooked. is, though, unfortunate that he obviously got hurt, but you're on the I'll court. Honest, you get criticized. Jimmy's been that hurt. Is what it is. Brunson's been hurt. Like, stars but get Jimmy, hurt. But Jimmy hasn't been what he was in round one or wasn't well, what he was in he's round playing. one. He's playing. Like, like, I get he's been hurt. He that's what, that's what you're but, saying. You're, and I, I'm with you. I get you play, hurt, you get criticism. It's not even the criticism part. That's the unfortunate All the players being hurt. Like start it's towards the end of the year. I you know, agree. You're, you're, That's what I, what, what, I cri- what I critique the most, and this is what soured on me on Joel Embiid throughout the season, is that every month it was a new quote about him talking about how the MVP to him either didn't matter or how there was no pressure on him to win it all because he had no MVP. But now you now you got it. You want it, and he didn't show up to the moment. And I, I, a lot of that goes to the Celtics defense because they did lock him down. And, you know, not only having Rob Bill as the back line, but there were times when Horford was a primary defender and they would send Brown and Tatum to even help on him. So I think it they was, historically locked him down. Yeah, yeah, it was it was like three guys when Embiid at one. So they did a lot to shut him down. It wasn't just that Joel Embiid was, you know, dog shit. Like the Celtics defense was that elite. And that's the same defense. This lineup is the lineup that was – Historically great defensively last you season. Gave Giannis a lot of fits in that round two last yeah. season. You gave almost you. Would you get you gave Jimmy some fits too <laughs> out of the side of those ones. Yeah, I mean he had a couple of big games. You but just couldn't get I, one guy. I but say, I just saw two of the best defensive performances by a team in this series. <sighs> and this is the Celtics okay. team that is the one that you feel confident can win it all. The when when Tatum's playing, playing defense, not, of course not fifty points, but stops. <laughs> yeah, when they're elite so defensively. When you're getting points in transition, when Tatum is consistent and, and finding his groove, this is the team that's capable of, of winning everything. And from a talent standpoint, you look at it and it's the most talented team in the league. Now, the quote that's going around social media that everybody's misconstruing is Joel Embiid saying that we can't win alone, I can't win alone, me and James, we just can't win alone. That's why basketball is played five on five. A lot of people have reacted to that tweet. But two sentences before that, Joel Embiid says, I got to be better and I will be better. That's what I'm focused on. Yeah. That's all you got to ask for from your start. That's all you need. Yeah. I don't need to ask. Because, yeah, the, with that one taken out of context quote sounds fucking nah, yeah. terrible. And even in the video clip, you can see the cut. Like, you can see the jump to nah. the cut of when he yeah, said that. He said, I got to be better. That's it. Yeah. I got to be better. I know I got to be better. Cool. That's you, all I need to do. You can't ask you. much more, though, out of the role players. I mean, for, for what you're getting at, Tobias, Maxi, PJ, like it's hard to look at them 
and B should have just stuck with, with him and James. And I want to point out one thing you said, Riv, because the Celtics do have these ups and downs, but a lot of that's offensively, right? If you're just not hitting your jumpers, mm-hmm. especially Tatum, and that pull-up jumper is not there, you know, it's going to be hard to score. But I think defensively, if you're bringing that energy, you could be consistent on defense. And Missoula all season long has gone with the spacing, having Horford at the five, starting Derek White, and that's given up some of the, you know, defensive prowess and power we had last season. But we're going to get into the Heat matchup later because they match up a little bit differently than the Sixers team. But if they're able to keep Horford and Robert Williams on there, it can combat, I think, some of that streakiness in the three-point shooting. Now, looking at how Philly is now, I don't think James Harden's coming back. I think Doc Rivers, while I don't think this playoffs is the reason why he should get fired, look at his track record and resume and probably come to the conclusion that he's not the coach to propel this team over the top. Joel Embiid, it feels like he's going to demand a trade this offseason. It feels that way. Where does he go? New York? The Knicks could be Philly's an attractive not destination. The Knicks, man. I think Miami or the Knicks is, is you think they're the teams that the I lose. I'm, I'm really I think good. Gonna do everything gonna, they is he going to win MVP and get traded the very next he year? He demands a trade. I understand that, but I just don't know if... How Has that a, ever happened how, in NBA history? I was going to... That's exactly what I'm wondering. Well, yeah. Did Barkley get traded after the 93 say, season? Not traded. I'm going to search up NBA history MVPs. You guys he won talking. MVP, and I think he got traded. I don't know. I'm, I'm not say, because I know MVPs have left their team the year after. I don't know if Miami's all in on sending out Bam and Tyler for Embiid. Because now you're losing two of your best players. I mean, two are your top three. Nah, but you improve. You, you do, but you, you – you, I don't want to – in theory, yes. You, you do improve. improve. But – Bam is a lot more healthier, Lose your best more defender. available. Max, He's a Max. clear, better, better defender. He just he fits the Heat culture, less attitude, more grit. Allows Jimmy to still play the type of basketball that he wants to play. And he's available. That's the most important part. Max. You know, he now, really Barkley was hurt. on the team. The year he was after. on the team? Yeah. yeah. He doesn't get hurt a lot. So I'm with you. It's Listen, there, it, I, don't know. It's I could go back 50 years, but in the last 20 years, no MVP has been traded the year yeah. after. Traded? No. MVPs have left. Yeah, for sure. But tr- the year after, no. And if yeah, he gets straight, he's going to the West. Say, I, I really don't think he's in the East. West or where? Somewhere. OKC. I, I don't That'd know. be late. I'd have a hard time but what seeing would Philly, trade? Tra- Philly would have to trade Chet. I mean, excuse me. Uh, no. OKC would have to trade Chet. Chet could play the four. No, no, no. They, I, you Jen have Williams. to trade Chet. Think so? Yes. Or uh, no, no. Chet and J-Dub, that'd be OD. I think Philadelphia would want a player back. Or a couple players back. J-Dub. <laughs> I see you when the lights are blue. <laughs> That'd be OD. I don't know. I'd do everything to keep that core and just add in bead and yeah. trade Because what they desperately need is a big. Wait, I mean, you just said keep the, I But, it, but I'm if I'm OKC, okay, I'm not fucking Chet. with the team. If I'm OKC, okay, I'm not fucking with the Chet? team. You have a culture It there. fits better. Does it? But Riff, if if you're OKC, okay, are you trying to mess with that team? Yes no, or no, I wouldn't do it. I was just no. throwing them in the air. You know, they have 30,000 picks. I'll send 14 picks. They need a point. They need a center and they're getting Chet Holmgren next season. Get a two for Lillard. It's not worth it. Portland? Yeah. Two number twos. Sharp, oh, crack sharp. Crazy. Damon, I'm working on cracking all day. Uh, <laughs> sharp, Simon, <laughs> and <laughs> picks. I don't know, but I, I just don't. I don't see the Sixers, especially the Knicks. They're, I do not think they're going to trade to the fucking Knicks. They don't have Why a not? fucking choice. They're like huge rivals. Are they Philly Sixers and Knicks? And Knicks? What do you think this East? is the eighties? But I, I, mean, I still basically. think there's that animosity. They're too there close to one another. Yeah, I'll you're, be you're honest with you guys. This right rivalry shit in the NBA is truly overblown. They're, the Knicks are in, and the Sixers aren't that much. Rivals. I mean, Danny Ainge wouldn't trade Donovan Mitchell to the Knicks. I think that's a Danny Ainge thing. Oh, that, that's a Celtics versus Knicks. Uh, I know thing. Celtics and Knicks is understandable. I know uh, the I Sixers. Think Philly. I, I don't think I've ever. Hit, not like the Sixers, I'll be well, honest. I mean, I think the Sixers have a rivalry with you guys. Like this shit, real for sure. Because we always beat them. Yeah, they hate like, you based, guys. Is it based a rivalry? Of, no, it's not. But they hate them like that. <laughs> based off of history, it's Knicks Pacers, Knicks Heat, Knicks Bulls. I guess maybe Sixers last. Mm-hmm. Like, but even Celtics. still, if there's something similar out there in the West. Obviously, they're going to cheer them to the West. I'm, I still remember in uh, I, I don't know if it was 2012 or 2011. When Carmelo Anthony hit those two game one shots on the, on, the, on the Bulls. It was twenty twelve From the right wing. 2012. Two right. back-to-back threes Regular in season. your grill. Yeah. And I was playing <laughs> NBA 2K. That was 2K, quite literally your best moment. I was playing NBA 2K16 the other day. Round one? With the Knicks. No, it was in pl- regular, was season. regular season. Yeah. Oh, of course. You I'm thought not. it was a playoff moment? Be serious. Oh, yeah, no. They played uh, they play round one. <laughs> I was no, playing my league with the Knicks. We never the, played the Knicks. I'm either. saying the Knicks played the they, Heat. No, they, they played Heat, but then they played – uh. Celtics, and then they played Indiana next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beat you guys. Cool. <laughs> but I was I was playing my league 
in two on two K sixteen, I was the Knicks. Man, looking at that Knicks roster, it was horrible. It was Carmelo, Robin Lopez, Aaron Aflalo. Uh I'm trying to remember Sasha Bujovic. Nah, he was not there. Was Prigioni on that squad or nah, he was not he was there gone. either. Man, the team was horrible. I was doing trade finder trades and I traded Porzingis. It was Ricky Porzingis on that team too. Ah, uh, okay. I traded Porzingis for Rudy Gobert and Derek Favors. Um When didn't Bagnati leave? Bargnani? Probably 2015. Okay. Uh, he was not on the roster at the time. But um, I basically won a championship with the Knicks. Tough. Because my, my starting five was Kemba Walker, uh, Gerald Green, Carmelo. At the four. Gerald Green was always, you know, he was, yeah, always, he was a, always dumb, nice, and okay, facts. Yeah. yeah, that's why I got him. Uh, Rudy Gobert, and I'm forgetting the other person I had. I had another, I had another player. There. Oh, I traded for Tim Hardaway Jr. too because – after his rookie season, for some reason, home. yeah, we traded him to Atlanta for whatever reason, and yeah, and my depth was insane. I just got a bunch of great players on my bench. And Tim Hardaway was, was dumb insane. nice with the Knicks. Yeah, he was good. I I wish we would have kept him longer, but you know, it is what it is. But do you think that Embiid goes to the Knicks or Heat? If you were to pick one, I, I'm gonna choose Philadelphia. I don't think he's leaving. I'll go Knicks. So what does you, have, you have more? Do you have more picks than Heat? The Heat don't have shit. And the Heat, it's Tyler Hero and Bam that they have. That's more enticing than whatever you guys are going to offer. Um, Julius Randle? Exactly. You mean you quickly? They, have, they, the they will have the 2024 picks. Detroit Pistons pick, though. It's got to be protected. No, it's it protected, protected for this year, so that means they will have it next year. It's protected next year, though? too. It's is pr- it? it? Probably, yeah. Oh, There's no way Detroit is giving up an unprotected pick God, in some dude. year, bro. You guys are trolls. <laughs> it's probably just like top 10 protected. throwing up maybe. them picks like them shits is sanctioned. All of them are protected, yeah. We have a ton of picks that are protected, but the eventually those protections are, are yeah, over. Like with, 2028. You know? 20, yeah. <laughs> well, you never know. It could, it could turn into something great. Yeah, you're not wrong. Now, the Grizzlies suspended John ja Morant because he was caught on IG Live with, with a gun again. And, and on the IG Live, there were only like 100 people in the live. I think who, it was his friend's live. Like, I want to know who found that, bro. 100 <laughs> people is crazy. There was only 100 people, and somebody was able to find that. And very top of the morning, it was on Twitter everywhere, on social media everywhere. And he's been suspended by the Grizzlies from all activities. And Woj reported on Get Up, ESPN Get Up. I think Ja is facing a lengthy, a significant suspension to start next season. If indeed that was a firearm in his hand in that video. So my question here is, how are they going to prove that it was indeed a firearm Just in the, that the video? Just the picture is clear as day. The video is... <laughs> No comment. Clear as day. I remember waking up seeing it's that. I was. I thought it was bro. like an article, like just recapping yeah. what happened three months ago. I'm seeing. That. I'm like, there's we, no well, way. Well, we know we know what it is, but I don't. Like for the for the NBA to on hope. I, I don't know what that is. For the NBA to be like, yeah, we have to like prove it's that. Well, like, how are you gonna prove it's it outside of watching time. the video? It just yeah. say the, the video look old to me. <laughs> it was Instagram live. IG live pre-recorded from six what months ago. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> what is he doing? Nah, John crazy, man. And that dude, why is he, if he has a gun, people are so stupid. If, if Drew has a gun in the car, why am I on IG live? But like, why yo, is What Josh kind of friend does he it? have? Yeah, no, okay, this, is not, the fr- this no, is not on the friend. This no, is not on the friend. This is on John. No, they're both idiots. No, no, for no, idiots. no, because you're on Instagram live and Ja is sitting there no, singing. 100%. And then he pulls out a yeah, gun. Yeah. He could have kept friend it on his lap or wherever it was. This is 100% on Ja, bro. No, I cannot be mad at his idiots, They're both 100% wrong. Yeah. Ja's both way more wrong. Wrong. No, because yeah, it's yeah, different. Because yeah. if he's in Memphis, if he's in one of these southern states where it's legal to carry a weapon, he could just have a weapon on him, and that's fine. He but Ja Morant cannot just pull out the gun when you know you're being recorded. That's the big issue already, here. And you already got in trouble for it. We had a segment on the show. Whenever it happened the first time, I called him an idiot. I said, you're acting dumb. You're in a position that people would love to be in. And here you go. It's dumb, bro. You don't get three strikes in the NBA sometimes, especially when you're doing activities like this. But the pro to pull out the gun on, on IG. So like, I he wasn't <laughs> trying to hide it. Like, like he was he was doing everything could to let people he upgraded. know. I have he a upgraded. Gun. You saw the, the first time around, it was like a little, Effects, little pistol. Go. This time around, he, he got decent. From the look of it, though, it looked like he had the gun already out from the video. Oh, it yeah, might, yeah, I think yeah. it was like on his lap. Yeah. You couldn't see. And then he's. And they're in the drop top. To face. I'm like, oh my God. Bro. No comment. IG Live is how you get in trouble, man. Yeah, who, for him especially, bro. <laughs> like, delete Instagram. Like. I, don't, I don't. I think we get like thirty games. I don't know. I don't. St- Stern and Silver aren't the same owner not, or same whatever. And I remember when Gilbert sure. Arenas ran down on somebody with a gun. He got like a sixty. He was in a locker room. That's worse. I know it is. Yeah, That's why he got, got but he only got like uh, what sixty games, sixty five oh only. God. 
Well, that's what I'm saying. Ja, Ja's situation. <laughs> the whole season. No, he should have got more. But Ja, Ja's situation ain't that bad. So I think we can like. You know, 30, I think 35. the the thing that sucks about all this is that Ja got a slap in the wrist the first time around. He got a slap in the wrist and Just he lied. tried it again, and now he's gonna get. I think he's gonna get significant punishment. Now I agree with all you guys and what you're saying, and you know, outside of this stuff, this drama, the Grizzlies to me were always these frauds and pretenders. But now this just takes it over the top. Guy just had to make it. And now you, you really think Dylan Brooks was the issue? I don't think so. <laughs> Let's be serious here. I don't think what so. What you go about? as It's all Jaws' fault, What the bro? fuck are we doing yeah. here? Apparently. So <laughs> build around Dylan Brooks. Let's see how that happens. <laughs> You're going to see a team's going to use him. He's going to sign on this offseason. And he's going to make a big impact. But shoot 31% seriously, from three. I agree with what you guys are saying. We all have the same opinion. But to play devil's advocate, there's a question out there that people are posing. Uh, uh, whether or not this is a, a, is a big deal. Uh, for Ja doing this, if in fact in the state it is legal to carry, Correct. and he's 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 basically it's a Second Amendment right. I think this I, is NBA I guess rules, though. It's, um, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, NBA is a private entity. They have their own rules. If you don't like it, like same sucks, with job, but. like your job in the law kind of goes exactly. hands in, but yeah. they have their own you get set paid of rules. Such a stupid amount. If the NBA says you can't own a gun, bro, put it. I, don't and don't you fucking probably, you use can one. probably own a gun, but yeah, it's yeah, an issue yeah, yeah. of do not be stupid with the yeah. gun. You know Posed what I mean? with it exactly. in film, don't, don't photos, be on, in social media, and. A lot of this stuff is common sense, man. Literally. That's what's most frustrating is after uh, they lost to the Lakers, he goes on to the press conference after the game and basically takes accountability and say, like, I have to be better. A lot of the dist- distractions I caused is not part of, but like one of the main reasons we lost this series because I had all this extra shit going on, and it felt like that was a moment that we're seeing Ja like grow up and kind of taking accountability and saying, like, I got to be better going forward. He gets a, what, eight-game suspension? Yep. And, like, it... You kind of, you should have saw it coming. Has he spoken coming. since the, no. um, this is, he has not said a word? Like he has a sit down with Jalen Rose. Like he does That's all, the, so, he goes to rehab so for 72 hours in Florida. Like a bunch of shit that was just there. We all knew it was there just to put it out to the media to say like a PR type of stunt. Like I'm going to be better this and that. And then to do it just like two months later to compound on it is just such a bad look for him. He was young, dumb, outside living his life. He got a lot of money. Out with the wrong crowd. You know, it's typical things. Ah. It's, it sucks because you're right, Riv. He is young and he is dumb. And if one of us did it, it's not a big deal because we don't have 5 million followers and getting all this money. But I think when you are a face of an organization, one of the faces of the NBA making $100 million, there's different, you know, set of rules for you. And there's different things you have to follow. You're making an unfair amount of money. So there's unfair expectations on you. If I'm making a hundred million dollars. And one of the things is you can't be on social media, boasting and using provocative language and showing guns and all this stuff. I'm going to shut up and I'm going to get my money and just stick to basketball. I think that's what a lot of people are saying. A lot of older players, just a lot of, you know, people in general are saying like you have the opportunity of a lifetime in front of you to change your family for generations and really set them up for your great, great grandkids to be straight. And you're not throwing this away, but you're making it incredibly hard for yourself. I think what I'm having a a, a hard, a hard time kind of balancing is that usually when you do things like that on social media, it's to impress other people. But I feel like John Morant's at a point in in his life where he doesn't have to impress anybody with what he does. Yeah. Like he he's a superstar basketball player and he doesn't have to impress anybody. In fact, him him flaunting guns on Instagram Live makes him look like an idiot. Bad for the youth. And I think everybody that's, that's your guy. I love Ja. He's letting you down. I love Ja to death. I love his basketball. I don't know what's going on outside. What the, the hell, man? Doesn't make a call. That has make and a I, call. And I'm tired <laughs> I know of him NBA like And I'm tired of the young man excuse. He's 23. That's a young age. I understand people make mistakes at that age. But he's somebody that already has a son, has already gotten big-time contracts. Oh, wait, sorry. He already has a kid. He, he's already gotten big-time contracts. It's time for him to mature and grow up and, and not be involved in, in, this, in this and putting his life in, in a dangerous position, hanging out with people that are potentially dangerous. It's that situation, man. Hope you just, you know, oh. Oh, no, no, so not, not Sasuke. Harden? My goodness. Not Harden fell. Harden fell? As Sa- he should. Sasuke fell into Harden. No, no Zion. Zion. Oh, well. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. He tipped over. He's, he's out for six months. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, Joe, you said something that was pretty interesting. You said uh, if one of us did it, it's not a big deal. But you know what? I feel like if one of us did that, 
I have think so? pre- I have pretty firm belief that one of you guys here would text me and tell yes. me that I'm bugging the fuck out. Because you have I'd giggle good, first. You have a say, good circle around like, you. Like, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like you gotta you gotta have some good people in your circle that's gonna tell you when you're acting out and and you gotta the get back is the to the good the, people in the circle was in the car with him. <laughs> To him, but that's what I'm saying. It's like that's the guy that has him on IG Live. That right now, I'm sure Ja looks at him, he's like, "Yo, bro, you put me in a fucked up situation right now." But in, in reality, it's obviously Ja Morant's yeah. fault. The, uh, I saw this TikTok of Ja. Um, it was J Cole. It was a J Cole song, oh, and it, it was I forgot oh, the, what it, song it, it is. This is when the thugs, thugs turn it no, off. No romance. Like, this is the part that the thugs skip, and, <laughs> and, and Ja Morant skips it. And he goes on to the next song. Yes, so that uh, yes, so that that one Crip member, a Blood member, talking about Ja yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. Nah, what did he say? He was just saying a whole lot of you not like that stuff. You don't want to be a part of. Yeah, this he said if you want to like come and hang and with we'll, like yeah, the we'll Crips and all this, life, we'll show yeah. you what it's really about. Like, it's dumb, man. Yes. Now we're gonna move on to our next topic, but before then, we're gonna talk about Shady Rays. Now Shady Rays Sponsor has Rays. now sponsored the Pick Aside podcast. And they are a, a sunglasses there. sunglasses company, glasses company. So kick off the new year with new gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered from the sun to the slopes with premium polarized shades, customizable snow goggles, and much more. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've worn. Durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures. And that's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they will have your back long after your purchase. With Shady Rays, you can look good and feel good. To date, they have donated over 20 million meals to fight hunger with Feeding America. If you don't love them, exchange for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop with Shady Rays. Their team always has your back. Now, exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the new year. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code PICKASIDE for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 200,000 people. Shout out to Shady Rays. Shout out Shady Rays, man. You just you just copped a pair, yes, right? I copped two. I copped one. I copped shades, green ones for me, and then I got a uh, rose colored ones for Jessica. Jess? Nice, yes. bro. Fifty percent off. You know, I bought two glasses. It was a hundred dollars, but then with the fifty percent off, it was fifty, and it's a good deal. And it came with two protective cases for them as well. It's a come up. Yeah, you know, I'm getting ready for the summer. They're for the summer, you got to get a ton of shades. Nice. Sure. sure. So as long as Shady Rays continues to have this pick aside code. I'm gonna bus. I'm gonna keep using fifty percent <laughs> off is is a, is a deal. Usually you get ten twenty percent yeah, off. Yeah, something's like what are you? Fifteen percent off. Fifty percent. Yeah, that's a lot. You get that a is a lot. Free. Yeah, basically, you do. Come up. Lakers versus Nuggets preview. Here we Western go. Conference Finals. Now, interesting matchup. Nuggets are first in offensive rating in the playoffs. The Suns, I mean, not the Suns. The Lakers are first in defensive rating. In the playoffs. Now, starting off with you, Drew. Yep. Now, what are your thoughts in this series? Uh, what are you looking for? And what are you predicting ultimately? So, this is definitely going to be the Lakers' toughest series. And, and I say that with respects to the reigning champions, of course, the Golden State Warriors. I just felt like the Golden State Warriors simply were not the same team as they were last season. I felt like we had the advantage on the defensive end, obviously. And offensively, I thought we matched up very well. And with their guys struggling... We could, have, we could have taken full advantage of that with the way that our defense is playing. However, now you look at the Denver Nuggets, and this is an offense that has been clicking throughout the entirety of the NBA season, and it's carried over into the postseason. They absolutely killed Phoenix. Minnesota, they had, they had a couple of hiccups here and there. That series was relatively close. Minnesota figured out some things late into the series, but, that, but that, by that time, it was too late, and, and the Nuggets were able to close that one out in five. But... I am optimistic, and I say I'm optimistic because, again, our defensive personnel is one that can match up relatively well with the Nuggets. Do I think that Anthony Davis will completely take Jokic out of this series? I'd be a fool to say so. Jokic has been on a different level. He is going to get his. He's too great of a playmaker as well 
for him to be taken out of a game. And so what I'm expecting, and I feel like a lot of people are expecting, is that this is going to be a one-on-one matchup. Anthony Davis is going to take that assignment. He's going to try and take Jokic out on an island and, and really try to limit him. And I understand where those people are coming from because Anthony Davis is simply at a different level defensively than what we've seen in the past. And he has been historically an unbelievable defender. It's just even more heightened in 2023. But what I'm expecting is what we've done against Jokic all season, which is play help defense. Against Jokic, more than 70% of the time, we are sending help on Jokic. And it's proven to be successful. And even prior to us making these acquisitions at the trade deadline, we, hadn't played, we haven't played the Nuggets with this new team. Before then, I believe we had four matches and we split the season series. And that was before we are we're the New York Lakers, where we have better defensive personnel, where we have more spacing on the court. And this is not this is now where we're seeing AD even better on the defensive side of the ball. And I feel like there's a little bit more motivation here at stake. There's a claim. If you're Anthony Davis, a lot of disrespect gets put on your name in the regular season, but where legends are made and, and, and where people get the most of their credit is the NBA playoffs. So what I'm expecting is, yes, I think game one, we'll test it out. We'll see if AD and Jokic can, if AD can, can handle Jokic one-on-one and see how that matchup fares. But I think as the series goes on, we'll start to see a little bit more help defense. Uh, one thing that I am looking forward to seeing, a lot of what you're going to hear from me, is defensive-based conversation. Because I think offensively, our game plan is not going to be what it was against the Warriors, what it was against the Grizzlies, where it's and get Anthony Davis the ball, make things happen. I feel like that... The, pers- the matchup is still one that AD can do well, but I still look at LeBron James, and I feel like those defensive matchups are worse. I think LeBron will take advantage of those. But on the defensive side of the ball for the Lakers defending against the Nuggets, I wonder if we do look into the possibility of having Anthony Davis play on Aaron Gordon and him sag off on Gordon, allow him to, to, to be in some space so Anthony Davis can be near the paint because obviously Anthony Davis is at his best when he is protecting the rim and he could be the floor general in that aspect, in that position. And then we have either a Rui or a Vando try and play defense on Jokic, and then when he drives to the paint, that's when AD crashes and he and we meet him with some some help defense. But and in terms of the guards, Reeves and, and D'Lo or D'Lo or Schroeder against Jamal Murray, against the KCP, I like those matchups if you're the Los Angeles Lakers. LeBron James will most likely be playing defense on an MPJ. MPJ, who's really become, he's just a spot-up shooter. Yes, he, he can go off the dribble, but more often than not, he gets the ball. He is shooting it. That's a fine defensive matchup for LeBron. LeBron just needs to make sure that he's, LeBron's off-ball has not been the best. Stays home. But he just needs to ensure that he is staying home. Offensively, I don't think we'll have a problem scoring Denver's defense has proven to get better in this NBA playoffs. But I feel like just the way that the Lakers are playing right now, we're, we're, we're extremely confident. We're, we're having guys. It, it doesn't matter which game. You can rely on a new a new player every single night. Delos had his moments. Reeves had his moments. Schroeder's had his moment. Of course, LeBron and AD, you trust that they're going to be them regardless. But I think what it comes down to is how we're going to scheme up against Jokic, make him uncomfortable. You're not going to stop him, but you got to try and make him uncomfortable. I think the Lakers will be successful in doing so. And I want you to know that this pre- prediction is with respect. Lakers in six games. That means you win one in Denver. I think that Denver's undefeated we have a better chance at beating them in Denver than and they have altitude? at us beating in, in L.A. Fair enough. Why? However, we have just the best home court advantage right now. So do they. That was, you guys are the best, no, too. You guys are both undefeated. I just think that crypto, the energy has been different. We have not lost since March 26th at home. We've just been a, a different type of team at home, really. And it's crazy because the, in the regular season, mm-hmm. we yeah. were a so-so home team. You guys were kind but, of a so-so team till the deadline. But don't you think sure. Denver was great that's at home effort. in the regular season and, and in the playoffs? In the playoffs. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Listen, when it comes <clears throat> to this matchup, I agree with your prediction. Because I think that it's a six-game six series either way. If one of these teams is going to win a series, it's going to be six games. I don't think the series goes to seven. I think very early on we're going to see which team has which figured out a little, a little bit more, and that's going to be the difference. The things that I'm looking at is I know that we're looking forward to this Jokic and Anthony Davis matchup, and it's going to be a hell of a matchup. But I'm not sure if Anthony Davis is going to guard Jokic to start the series or maybe later on in the series as Lakers make adjustments because 
while he is the best defender for Jokic, without a doubt, I think putting him on Jokic does a couple things. One, it risks him being in foul trouble, and you can't have Anthony Davis be in foul trouble. And I also think that if you if Anthony Davis is guarding Jokic, in these playoffs he's shooting 48% from three, the best way to beat the Lakers and to cripple their defense is to take Anthony Davis away from the paint Correct. so you don't have a rim protector. If Jokic is shooting that well and now they have this five-out offense and he's out there guarding Jokic, it's now going to make the Lakers susceptible to a lot of backdoor cuts and Jokic at his best passing the ball. Pass. It's going to, you know, he's an offensive machine. He's one of the best passers in league history. So I think what we probably will see is either Vando or LeBron guarding Jokic and Anthony Davis on Aaron Gordon with that. roaming around and helping kind of how the Celtics played with Rob Joel Rob. Embiid. <clears throat> what I'm also looking at is LeBron hunting mismatches versus Jamal Murray KCP, MPJ. Sure. KCP is a good defender, but he's just not strong enough to withstand LeBron, and neither is MPJ. And Murray's too small, and he's not strong enough. Gordon will probably take the LeBron yeah. assignment, yeah. I'm assuming. And what the Lakers have defended the most this postseason have been dribble handoffs, and they allow the lowest efficiency on those. That is the bread and butter of the Nuggets two-man game between Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic pick and roll, but a lot of that is dribble handoffs, and the Lakers are amazing at guarding that. The key for the Nuggets to win this series, because I think if you're just relying on star power, you kind of lean the Lakers with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. The key for them to win this series is these two things. They have to limit turnovers, and they have to be disciplined in fouls. I sure. think if you can keep the rate of free throws at an even level, and you're not turning over the ball, which means the Lakers are not getting out in transition and they're not getting easy baskets because Denver in these playoffs has been a horrible transition defense. If the Denver Nuggets can keep this series a half-court game offensively and defensively, I think they win this series. But if the Lakers are getting turnovers, getting out in transition, I, I think that's when, where Denver gets into real trouble. And if they're drawing fouls and now you have either Gordon or MPJ in foul trouble, it's going to be an issue because I think the De Denver Nuggets role players, they've been good, but Jokic makes them look better. Agreed. And in a matchup where Jokic may not, that the passing of his game may not be as great because maybe they're just putting one-on-one -on -one coverage on him, that's going to hurt. And also, Denver shooters are not shooters that Lakers are not going to test. I think Bruce Brown is going to be left open in this series. I think Jeff Green's going to be left open in this series, and I think Aaron Gordon's going to be left open in this series. For sure, all those guys are going to are going to have to prove that they can make open jump shots at a consistent level. And if they don't do that, then the Lakers are going to easily win this series. So I think it, it's going to be a six game series either way. Uh, I'm, that I'm going to be I'm going to do a cop out and say it's either Lakers in six or Nuggets in six. I think very early on we're going to see what happens. How 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 does that work? We don't allow that. Pick pick a winner, bro. Like just, I don't how know. The, how the hell is he going to name the show Pick a Side and not? <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't know what just happened. You cannot yeah. you cannot say <laughs> you cannot say either team can win the series. That's obvious. Have dignity. Pick one. I really don't know who's gonna win the series. I do. I'm having I'm I having decided. trouble picking who's gonna win. Well, you're a Lakers fan, so you're gonna pick the Lakers to win. But I gave but his very reason, strong yes, his reasons. reasons. He, did, he didn't come up here and you say did Lakers. Tell us last episode, you've been riding with Denver all year. Yeah, are you listen, gonna, I are think you, you said it was Denver or Phoenix <laughs> coming out of the West. No, I'm definitely riding with Denver. But here's here's the thing. <laughs> oh, so, here's the thing. Okay. Here's the thing. I think, especially when it comes to my life, jinxes have been a pivotal part in them. So pick up the main staple. Yeah. So I don't want to say Denver and be like, oh, you know, eh. pick up yeah. then. Sure, I'll pick. Let's be honest. Let's be real with each other. Okay, Would you rather be wrong or have Drew's Lakers go to the finals? Well, you know the answer. To that. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Listen, if that's the case, I got Lakers in four. I got Lakers in four. No, but to, like I said, I think all, the analysis I gave for key points of this series are sound. I really don't know which way to lean in this series. I'm going to just say that I think that the Lakers are going to do a better job neutralizing Jokic than Denver will be able to neutralizing AD and LeBron. And I do think that they will get out in transition. So I do lean Lakers. I'll pick the Lakers to win this series. There we go. What do you got, Mr. Brown? We've come a long way. Ah, oh, we have come a long way. You bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Me? Not Dells. Uh, <laughs> am I wrong? 
No, what the fuck? I, I was floored. To, I'm just going to go Lakers me. He and Nuggets. He did catch me by surprise. Bro, bro said, gonna I'm going to tell you the series goes six, but I'm not going to pick a winner. I've never heard that in my life. I thought he was going to go Denver, honestly. I've never heard I, that I in my life. I thought he was going to say Denver in seven. That's like the Heat or Knicks, you know, in that series. Listen, if these things go right, if these things go wrong, it go either guy way. Guy has no dignity. Knicks and, Knicks. Knicks and six the way, I, and six. the way that I'm thinking about it now, he really has no dignity. Uh-huh. He said the Nuggets were his team to go to the finals. He said the Suns were his team to go to the finals. One now that they're in prime, the now Lakers. they have in prime they made position. the WCF. They're, they're right. a step away. They're literally one series away from Joel being this crowned guy. I cho- I said the Nuggets. You said Denver. All Those the are my guys. And now he's suddenly deciding to go with the Lakers because he's scared. It's the jinx. Hey, he's well, scared. Listen. Well, listen. Well, listen. Isn't that something? Well, listen, Drew. Well, listen, Drew. We just talked for thirty seconds about how. There's a jinx going on, so you know maybe you I know, got like Lakers. All these I know that's actually no, Denver. Because then when the Lakers win, you get no credit with me. Okay, is that what you want? <laughs> it really does not bother me at all. It does not. I'm cool. Because this guy's just doing it in spite of me. No, I just, I just, I just honestly want to see a phenomenal series. You want to see good basketball? What I will say though is that I root for storylines. I under, I understand. He's lying. I don't. You He's root lying. to be right. No, you've been no, preying on the Lakers' lines. downfall, even though this is the greatest storyline arguably look, ever. And I, I saw a poll on YouTube recently, and it was like, what would a championship ring, what would it mean for these players? And it was LeBron, Steph, Jokic, and Harden. And LeBron won the poll by a landslide. I understand it's going to be his fifth championship. For me, at least, the GOAT debate is already LeBron and MJ, 1A, 1B. Doesn't, I don't care about the GOAT debate. If you say LeBron's a GOAT, I'm not going to give you pushback on that. I love the storyline of Jokic winning after being a two-time MVP, getting his name dragged in the mud all season. I do l- favor and love that storyline more. Oh, yeah. I would I would love to see Jokic win the championship over everybody else. No, I, I would. He gave him his first sweet though. Yeah. I, I think I, the Jordan rather, LeBron should settle. If you're a LeBron guy, you can go LeBron. You're Jordan. I just don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck either. Look, I, I'm be, I'm tired of LeBron winning. I'm done. It's the only thing I care about. It's only don't give a fuck about no more is because people just bring up stupid things when you talk about it. Like it's never a real basketball conversation. It's always people. He failed this. He failed this. It's a good thing that I'm not a part of whatever. Saying because I agree yeah. with you because there's just, it, it's not a good conversation on both anymore. sides. It's super super bland and very generic, and you're 100 percent right. It never really is about what they're actually doing on the court. Yeah, it's too. It's it's all accolade based. It's it, all who failed what fast. It, exactly. Who exactly. fucked up here? Yeah. Who didn't who, do this? Who needed? Who, who did this more? Yeah. One guy exactly. left the league. He was a gambler. Yeah. He's not. The, yeah, yeah, right. He's it's a like, bad person. Yeah, Can't like, be the goal. On, it's on top of that. I think that with Jokic, it's just a lot of bad faith arguments that happen. Yeah, we saw it throughout it's the regular season, the but it's already cemented that he's better than Embiid. Just off. Yeah. I don't. I don't think it's so just cemented for you. I don't think. Oh no, I'm done. It's oh, over. Okay. Well, listen. I don't, I, actually, Embiid got hurt. We'll, we'll see oh next season. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it's just an Embiid thing, though. I think yeah. it's people have just pounced on Jokic because they don't. I don't know why they don't. I think you know, this like run, though, this player fund, what he's doing right now. But this is the thing, and, and this is what what I said last episode rings true for everything. Rev, what'd you say? <laughs> listen to the Yo, you're crazy. <laughs> What I said last last episode rings true for how we view how casuals view the game is that oh. people end off the sentence as if you win or you didn't win. Even if Jokic is amazing in this series, if he loses, it's going to be held against him, and I think we know that. Um, it's, it's, and now it's going to be you know yeah. you haven't won and stuff like that. So do you think people hold it against KD? He lost to Milwaukee. Yes. I think when you get to the best players in the league, I feel like that's I, gonna come down I would to say it. that that's. I understand he Not won. Not to me, but people I, say, I understand it. that he won two championships. I, I look at that Milwaukee series. That's probably the best basketball I've seen Kevin Durant play. Yes, but yeah. you were also one of the people laughing with me when, when he went 0 and 6 in yes. overtime. Because come on, bro, we're narrative based. And it was always <laughs> fuck Kevin Durant at that time. But th- that's why with Jokic, there's a lot of bad faith arguments. And I remember on Twitter just a week ago, there was something that went on of if. If Jokic wins a title, is this equivalent to Dirk's 2011 run? Because he has no other All Star. I've seen a lot. And then of that a lot of people happened. quoted it, tweaking. joking, "Oh, if LeBron wins, is this Dirk? Because he has no other All Star." Or yeah, they they would use there. that they would use that Steph for Embiid no and shit. And I'm like, okay, but like Jokic actually doesn't have a current or former All Star, where LeBron has. Anthony Davis, like it's bad faith arguments yeah, to Murray's just. Playing at All Star level it, it, right now, It's bad faith yeah. arguments just to make Jokic look worse. I've seen that shit. It was hilarious because I saw a Steph one. I agree though. We don't have an All Star, but I saw a Steph one. Andrew Wiggins was an All Star. Ah, 
Starter. Really? Ribs. He was a starter. Oh, ribs. But now nah, I seen. I, I know what you're talking about. That that was that was a, it was a funny time in two because they were just throwing anybody up. Was speaking very truthful and and that's a very fair claim. Yeah, because I think if Jokic does win, it's gonna be on that I type of level. I saw, I saw a Devin Booker history. one up there too. They was like, well. Kevin Durant, yeah, they, they do. Just, it was just, yeah, that's, I, like, that's like a Hakeem type championship. It's I a like, Dirk type championship. I like ah. these outliers. Hakeem won twice, so it's a different level. But Hakeem winning at that time, it cemented him. Hey, oh. there's MJ, but then I'm right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the second best player in the league. Hakeem's just a I different. I like these outliers just in sports he was a better history. All around player, I get it. Where in the '90s, it's MJ, 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 then ill Hakeem, yeah. and it's Kobe, Kobe, Dirk, Dirk LeBron, LeBron. You know, and the Timmy. Spurs, Timmy Tim Duncan. I like Paul these Pierce. outliers in NBA history where Outlier. <laughs> the underdog does win it. Because <laughs> even before these playoffs, the, people thought the Nuggets were a first or second round exit. So I, I like these outliers in sports history. So I'm definitely rooting people for that. saying that line. the Nuggets were a first or second round exit. Come on. Was, people was, were was, saying that. Oh, Minnesota? Round two. Right, but round one is oh, God, Not about Minnesota, Chris. but you got to understand that we weren't sure if it was going to be Minnesota or the Lakers. It could have been either. Golden oh, State yeah, was in that conversation time. for a few weeks at the end we of the season. Never, I'm glad, I'm glad the Lakers <laughs> had two series to cook up before we met the Nuggets. Round one would have been tough. I'm just glad we got out the first if we round. we beat them round one, we're going straight to the finals. <laughs> oh, I yeah, can't yeah, be no yeah, fucking first round. Right? I'm just glad we got out of that part. I that. Almost were. Oh, yeah. Curry. Curry 50, hey, bomb. Hey, That's man, why he's your goat. Great done. players do great things. Exactly. Just um, to, <laughs> you, you get that. I'll let you live with that. You know, he yeah. was on Dame Time and first round merchant. <laughs> oh, He's talking about Curry. No, it's funny because, you know. <laughs> His team suck. <laughs> Definition of first round merchants? Who? Uh, hey, next one. No, uh, uh, Harder's not a first round merchant. Harder. Okay, but I was the talking Knicks about the are not. They're not, not make the playoffs merchants. <laughs> yeah, they hey, they, they got, are. They're outliers. Yeah, okay, they're making the playoffs. Got it. They're outliers. Um, but like their best seasons in like the last twelve years have been no, second, uh, round, second, second round, round exits. So first round merchants. Yeah, uh, it happens. They don't always have the best talent. Mm-hmm. Um, no, for sure. Talk about Denver and the Lakers, though. This is this Talk is also. Nice. This is also another one I've been struggling back and forth with uh, because I did think that the Lakers defensively was probably the best team in the league right now in the playoffs. But the Nuggets offensively are probably the best team in the playoffs. No doubt. And um, you think about these matchups like Aaron Gordon specifically, he provides a different challenge. Just as athletic as Wiggins, a lot stronger, a lot more physical. So that that can play a part in guarding LeBron. You know, he can give that physicality back. He's just as strong, not just as strong, but he's strong enough. He's athletic. He can stick with him. He's a really good defender, too. That's somebody who you trust out there that can guard. Um, The way Denver's just been playing defensively this playoffs has been better than what people expected. Uh, Defensive coverage that they've thrown. The Joker has been really good defensively. You know, for all the slack he's been getting, he's been locked in defensively. They've been a great defense team. Yeah, and then offensively, we don't really have to talk about it much. They give you what they give you. You mentioned it. They got a couple guys who can't hit consistent shots, but when Jamal and MPJ are hitting and they're on fire, that team is a dangerous team. Even KCP, I think in that game six, he started off on a heater. He was absolutely cooking the Suns. Um, To me, though, I think the Lakers defensively, they just can provide so much trouble on that end. You know, they got guys they can go small. They can go a little bit big. They got long, lanky defenders. They got speedy defenders. They got quick ones. I do like the backcourt and Schroeder and Reeves to provide some trouble for Murray. No doubt. No doubt. But for, for when they go small and they have to defend MPJ and Aaron Gordon, you know, those could be possible switches. Aaron Gordon's really good at getting switches down low and making a quick move and getting a bucket or being good in those cuts. You know, he's just as big, athletic. And the MPJ can just shoot over any guard you guys have. So I'm definitely looking at those mismatches. I'm also looking at the defensive connection that you have with Schroeder and Vando in navigating the screens work because we was talking about it before. Yep. When you help, when you uh, go over or under, this team shoots a 61% EFG, so they're pretty much knocked down. Automatic. Yeah, with Murray and the Joker, so I'm very interested in Schroeder fighting over, fighting under, what they're going to do. Um, I got Lakers in six, though. I, or Lakers in seven. I think this is a 6-7 series. I'm going to just say I got the Lakers winning. You I know, don't feel good about this. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I miss I just, when you guys were sleeping on this us. This feels like the, the Bengals... Versus Chiefs playoffs. Well, no, I did say whoever comes out the second round. Lakers I know, Warriors, but I still don't they, feel good they, about it. Not. I Get just the fucking nugget, you bitch. No, oh, I no. hate you. I mean, you want me to go to Denver? I'll no, be no. If it makes you, if it makes you feel better on a TikTok, because you have respected the Lakers for a little while at least. Yeah. You have been a bastard, and the last <laughs> week you want to be a Lakers guy suddenly. It's, it's not been it's the last annoying. week. It's been the last two weeks. We had the last two weeks. You're showing some respect. If it makes you feel better, if it makes you feel better on a TikTok comment that. That I wrote to somebody on somebody on my video, I did say Nuggets and six because of home court advantage. I think. All right, so then we, be a man 
insane nuggets. We haven't we haven't mentioned that, but I do think the altitude could take a toll. All right, good. The, the reason why I am a little bit less confident in that now is because of the rest that they've had between these games. For sure. And that's why like game Saturday, one. Right? That's why it was Saturday huge. We closed, man. It closed in six. So yeah. we Tuesday. both had games tomorrow. Right? Yeah, tomorrow oh, night. Saturday, Tuesday. Game tomorrow. one, I, I don't know. It's oh, a toss-up. I, I think mean, game both one. these teams are the best home teams in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. So this could go seven games realistically. Yeah. Um, and then games, if it goes seven, and you and you have the balls sheesh. to pick the Nuggets. You think I mean, the Joker is the best player in the world right now. Okay. Like comfortably. Okay, I get it. He's but you're gonna. Act, LeBron has to get into that mode. He'll get into that mode. The Joker's been in that mode. Okay, but Le, if LeBron Ten has games. to get into that mode, he'll get into that the mode. Joker's and when LeBron's in that, in that mode, he's the best in the game. He's better than all of your, your, your whole team. The Joker. Right we'll now. see that. We'll see. Oh, by far. Oh, right now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right now. No, Jokic has been OD. Yeah. But Anthony Davis has been OD. The Joker's been better. And when LeBron needs to, he will be OD. So we're gonna. I'm gonna ask you guys a question, and then as you get into your analysis of this series and your prediction for this series. Yeah. Hoping Lakers, man. Let's get a clean sweep Who knows? here. Who knows? Please. All right. I'm the con- no. Everyone, Wait, so you're going with everyone understands. Lakers? I'll go Lakers. I think the six? Lakers win. No, I just said Lakers. I don't really give a fuck about the game. I respect that more than it's going Let's six, you know, I'm Drew, Riv and I had a conversation before the show. This was the plan all along. I don't know. I was that. with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this text not exist in the oh city zero? Uh, but listen. Okay. So maybe this might, you might, this might add some fuel to your fire, Drew. On Mojo, Nuggets are projected to win game one. 71 cents, I saw. 71%. See, come on, man. I'm locked in. Nuggets, 33%. I mean, Lakers, Lakers have a 33% cents, yeah. chance to win game one. Nuggets, 71% chance, according to Mojo. I get it. Right now, the, their odds uh, to win the game, I think the spread's five and a half. I get it. Game one, Nuggets have the extra days of rest. They've been amazing at home. But the last two teams that we've played, they've also been amazing at home. If, if the Lakers win game one, man, I feel even more confident. But that's definitely a game I could I can see us losing. But game two, then we start to get desperate. I, w- I just want game one to be close. Well, the Nuggets, the difference between the Nuggets and uh, the Warriors, the Nuggets are coming off rest. The, the Warriors came facts, off uh, facts, game seven. Facts. And they but all- I just look at, I'm talking about the Grizzlies, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was um they, they, two yeah. great home teams. And this is another, obviously, amazing home team. But the Lakers have showed that when we go onto the road, we're a gritty team that we could beat any team. For and sure. you know, I showed you I have money invested onto into Austin Reeves. I went there long you. on Reeves. Did you? I, wow. I did. Oh, sure. I did. This guy, he you should. He's, he's going I crazy. Did. Today. I didn't know. He, you saw the you saw the money that they might give Reeves. I saw fifty million. It was a uh, 10, 10, 25, 25. That's fine. Yeah. But that's here's like, why. Here's why. Years, 50 that's what I'm saying. That's no, that's more than easy. fifty. 10, 10, 20. 20. 45. So it's 65. like 60. Yeah, 65. Some shit. But here's why I invested into Austin Reeves. I thought, I thought because 70. if the Lakers if the Lakers do win this series, he's going to be a huge part of it. Yes. But even if he if they don't, if he gets a contract extension, his price is going to go higher. It's going to rise up. Facts. Same thing as Daniel Jones. He got an extension. It rose up. So I, I think so at this point. Why don't you go long on Maxi? Tyrese Maxi? Maxi will get paid more than uh, It's Reeves. just because Maxi is probably more expensive yeah, than Reeves. Austin good. Reeves is very undervalued. What's in my the 70s, Reeves? right? Uh, Can you check yeah. Maxi real quick? Yes, I'll check him. Maxi is about to be 160. Yeah. Hey, d- it's just great it. to see you know the Reeves support coming really all at once. Tyrese Maxi is All it took is putting your boy to bed. Oh, That's hmm? really what it took. So Reeves is putting your boys to bed. He played two good games. The players over... It was, it was, it was right, good. Yeah. The it players over Maxi, like the first three players over Maxi, Kevin Love, Valanciunas, and Rando. Oh. Below Maxi is Brunson, Middleton, and CJ McCollum. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Brunson? Yeah, that's re- that's crazy. Brunson's contract won't go up. I think Brunson is going to yeah. definitely prove a lot of people wrong. And then let me look at Austin yeah. Reeves. So Austin Reeves right now, his share oh. price is $84.80. Three players above him, Bruce Brown, the Anthony Melton, Josh oh Hart. God. Three players below: Lugans, Dort, KG, Martin, and Karis Levert. He's the best. And then Vando bunch. is the fourth. Guy Lou Dort. I was gonna say Lou Dort's the one uh, I'll give so you because the, the Dort. torture chamber. Yeah, yeah, that shit's like real. That's what I'm saying. He's very undervalued right now. Yeah, he is. Um, how much has been up this last month? Well, he's got to be like twelve percent, fifteen percent. And the last month, he's up thirteen yeah, percent. He's been going crazy. No, he's up. Sorry, he's up nine percent. Mm. In the last year, he's up fifty-six yeah. percent. That's good. I mean, yeah, he went from undrafted. Now he's. Playing fucking playoff minutes and a key contributor to this Amazing. team. Yeah, I got all green right here. Number You're going green. Crazy. I, I invested into Brett Beatty and Francisco ah, Alvarez. Okay, ball nowhere, ball nowhere. I'll tell you a concern of mine to talk about the Lakers and Nuggets series again, real quick. 
A, a genuine concern of mine, though, is the Nuggets not worrying about shooters in a corner. Obviously, we're a better passing team than Phoenix is. We're mm-hmm. able to make those skip passes to the corner. That's not a concern. The concern is, Hitting are them. they going to make them? The Nuggets have shown, hey, we'll leave you in the corner. That'll be our defense. We'll stick around the paint. That's how we'll defend Anthony Davis. That's how we'll try to limit or, and maximize the amount of bodies if LeBron's going to drive, if he's going to get into the po- post, which is really how LeBron's been getting most of his buckets when he comes to the box. But that's where I do worry about Vando, where we saw last series against the Warriors that he kind of got played off the court, and that's when we made the lineup change to get Schroeder into the lineup. But against the Nuggets, that's not a team that we have the luxury of of having that size Going advantage. Smaller. Exactly. Mm-hmm. This is a series that we go back to to the to the Grizzlies series, and we're now the smaller team again. And how are those minutes going to look when Anthony Davis is off the court? When it's LeBron and Rui, or LeBron and and realistically, it'll be LeBron and Rui. But then, is Wenyan Gabriel going to get minutes? Like, do we People see said, do we see a Tristan, Tristan, Tristan Thompson, Thompson because of the size? I, I That's when clip. I start to get. Gen- lie, the moment you put Tristan Thompson it's in shop. the game, unless, <laughs> unless you're like thirty, I don't know what Tristan Thompson. I don't even is give the that could go, go away in a minute if you put him in the game. Minutes, bro. See, like that, like I would like to be optimistic that Rui Hachimura, this is where he could leave his mark because then you can't leave Rui open in a corner. He's shown all postseason he's long that he'll down. be he's able to knock down it's those cool shots. Down. Well, the, against the Nuggets, uh, excuse me, against the Warriors, we really didn't need Rui. It wasn't a series no, he for was Rui a mismatch. to thrive, for mismatch. sure. And that's why I felt like Schroeder was the absolute amazing adjustment by Darvin Ham. But in this series, the, just the the idea of guarding Jokic is not one that I look at with Rui and think this is where he can yeah, nah. contribute the most. It's just not at all. That's that's not the matchup you're looking for. I'm surprised all of you guys are going six. All in the Lakers, all in six. No, he's not pick, going Lakers. He's not going. He's going Lakers solely in spite of me. Well, regardless, Lakers or Nuggets, going this six. This is Nuggets and six. All right, this I is think, Nuggets and six. I think this is a seven-game series. I have Lakers right on my face. <laughs> Screw you. He doesn't believe that one bit. Um, I think this is a seven-game series. Drew, you mentioned it. We all mentioned it. These are the two best home teams remaining in the playoffs. I don't both see LeBron undefeated. Losing seven. Both undefeated. Oh and I, I respect that. Listen, LeBron has shown when he wants to get into that mode and he wants to get downhill, he's able to do that. I do think Aaron Gordon is probably his best uh, defender this whole playoffs. Right? You have Dylan Brooks, who's just a little bit small. He said, fuck um, Andrew Wiggins. Yeah, Andrew, Andrew, exactly. Andrew Wiggins just isn't strong enough to guard LeBron, who's fucking like 250, 260. Andrew um, but Aaron Gordon has the size and he has the mass to be able to at least be able to guard or somewhat limit LeBron in the post, not being able to get babied. Because Andrew Wiggins, he's a great on-ball defender, great perimeter defender. To be fair, he's LeBron skinny. only killed him. When Wiggs had rib injuries, yeah, without a doubt, that game six. But when LeBron turned it on, and he said, rib "I got to drop 30. It's, it's very, it's very, shots. it's very odd of him to turn it on when the rib injuries. LeBron's got a fucked up foot. What are we doing? He does have a fucked up foot. Casual, He's fucking forty. That's why <laughs> that foot's <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, exactly. Old as shit. And he still gave your boys thirty in a closeout. Yeah. Wiggs locked him up for the most. You want serious. this too? <laughs> he can't I got get nothing. it. He I can't got, literally can't, can't get it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just, just wait for another month, and when I could get some, I could get spicy. Um, but you can make the argument these are the two best teams remaining in the NBA playoffs you know i'm a celtics guy i love them to death but their inconsistencies they're real you know i want i want to see what this two man this two big lineup looks going forward but the lakers have been expecting phenomenal. you to be a little bit more hype about the celtics too job's not finished i'm, I'm not getting yeah, hype over you know a second, and a second i understand because you guys were like strong favorites yeah. and it was ugly i'm not getting hype over a second they're strong round favorites victory, again yeah we're minus 500 yeah we're gonna talk um, about that 97 percent chance to are, win. You, are you guys are you concerned at all but like because the Lakers offense was up and down in the Warriors series and it was yeah. fine because the Warriors offense wasn't able to hit shots. But with Denver, like, are you con- concerned at all with the fact that Denver's offense can get fire and can get exploded? Maybe the Lakers cannot keep up with it. Uh, no, it, I was asking you because you haven't yeah, talked that's about fact. it. No, I'm, I want you're the Lakers guy. So I think realistically, I think because their defense, you look at the two, yes, the Nuggets have been really good this postseason, but you look at the Warriors defense, you would think that they are just the better unit overall. I think that we're still going to be able to hit shots so long as Anthony Davis continues to be aggressive. I think that, yes, Jokic has been good defensively this series, but I still think that Anthony Davis is good enough to get his against Jokic. LeBron, again, I don't look at these matchups that the Nuggets have and think that that's one that it'll be beneficial for them. LeBron will get his. Reeves, and I don't think there's a guard. KCP is a very solid defender. I don't think that he's locking Reeves. I don't think that he's... Realistically, the one who can stop get stopped is because he'll stop himself is D'Angelo Russell because he's been so hot and cold. But when he's on, D'Lo has just been one of the more key contributors to our offense. So I don't really have a concern about it just because of how dominant our defense has been. And I get it, this offense has been great. 
But what do you our, de- what do you our, think our, our, our perimeter do defense, KCP? It's just what he's been doing. The 16 to 18 points per game that he's been consistently at with, with solid defense, uh, really what, what KCP, what Reeves needs to do on the defensive side of the ball is just be active, make sure you can continue to contest. <laughs> we saw what he did. Listen, Clay Thompson really was the main reason why Clay struggled, but Reeves had a hand in that. Reeves was always running around the court wherever Clay went. He was met with Austin Reeves. There was always a contest. Not saying that Clay didn't have some you really strong looks. You don't have to save looks. Clay, bro. I know. I'm just. I I'm, don't give, give. He's garbage. All right. Yeah. Reeves <laughs> did a, Reeves did a really, terrible, really yeah. good job defensively again in that Golden State series, and I expect the same against the Nuggets. Yeah, I, I definitely think there's going to be some median there uh, because the Lakers' defense, how great it's been. We talked about the shot quality, and you know we're talking about analytics and what ifs, but the shot quality the Warriors were getting. They were missing a lot of open looks. Yeah. And Denver, you know, they have guys that could go hot and cold too, whether it's Bruce Brown, KCP, Jamal Murray's been fantastic, Aaron Gordon. But they have a lot of guys that could, similar to the Warriors, when you're a three-point shooting team, if it's a night where you're going to be missing shots, it's going to be hard to win that game. But I think you have to look at the Lakers and what they could do defensively every night. As I talked about just before, when you the Celtics going with that two-big lineup, if you're able to play defense every single night, which is easier to translate than hitting shots because it's just a numbers game, right? Sometimes you're going to hit them, sometimes you're not. I think that translates better over a seven-game series. But I do think this goes seven just because of the home court advantage both teams have. I think the fact that neither team has lost in these playoffs, no matter even when the Lakers really turn on, because we see the Lakers in both of those game fives when they were uh, Golden State and Memphis, and they lost those games, right, where they had a chance to close it out and they didn't. But then game six, they said, all right, we're going to stop fucking around. We're going to close this out in six so it doesn't have to go seven. So the Lakers almost have that ability have that gear, to turn correct. it on and turn it off. But this Denver, this Denver series, having that game six, that's going to be the biggest test. But to get to that game six and have that 3-2 advantage, you're going to have to win a game in Denver. And I don't see the Lakers doing that. So I do think it's a seven-game series. I think it goes either way. If I had a pick right now, I trust a little bit more what the Lakers are doing defensively to win in seven games. Um, I'm not going to go with the cop-out with, Joe, with Mr. Moran. Um, but I think right now... The jig is up for me. I disrespect the Lakers in the first round. Second round, I, th- I thought How the Warriors had a legit you. chance. But I think the jig is up. That What they've shown me, their role players have been phenomenal. Their ability to switch, their ability to play defense. All of their guys could play defense, right? So I think that you pair that with Anthony Davis having at least three of those games being able to dominate offensively, plus being the best defender in the NBA. And you have LeBron James who can... He's not obviously fucking prime LeBron giving you 30, but he's giving you that 24 with 11 rebounds, five assists, mostly being efficient. Hitting his, hitting his threes. Oh, he made 34% of his threes I'll against the Warriors. Fucked. So right it's now... It's a pick aside consensus. Right now, I just... We have never won anything. I think, so we all picked the Lakers. They're fucked. I, I got to look myself in the mirror and say, I've been disrespecting Lakers for too long. Jokic Dude, how do you feel great, about this guy trying to right his wrongs? He's disrespected his team all year long. <laughs> He's been on and off, man. He he does it for the jokes, and sometimes he's serious. Just like you do it with Tatum, not. huh? I did it one time. This fucking guy. Before, this guy. before you, there was me. All right, buddy? Before you, <laughs> there was me. Aspects. So, Jesus, I don't feel great about this, and I even a little bit. Joel, be, I, I need you to give a firm analysis. Are the Lakers winning confidently, in your opinion, yes or no? I said earlier. I'm not. I think it's a 50-50 series. I'm I, gonna, I have to I, make a pick, but. I said it before. I have Lakers written on my face. You have something else written on your face, but I can't say it on camera. <laughs> Come. <laughs> what? <laughs> Got him. I yeah, the asshole. clean sweep is never a great <laughs> look. <laughs> My God. <laughs> what? He said he was eating asshole. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My Lord. You guys aren't. So we all got Lakers. Salad tossers? We all got Lakers. What could go wrong? I might flip. I hate being on the all yes side. No, I'll stay. Don't don't flip. Don't I miss. He wants the those the sweep jinx. I miss the last two series when it was me alone. I miss it so badly. I miss it terribly. Hey, we all picked the. Uh, we all picked the Warriors. Yeah. All picked the Grizzlies. Facts. I miss it. Bring me back. This you is horrible. You guys aren't salad ta- sa- salad tossers. What do you, what are what we I doing? doing? My private time is my <laughs> business, Joel. <laughs> this is a podcast <laughs> about basketball. <laughs> Fucking slut. Wow, Lakers and uh, okay. 
I don't I don't care who wins either. Speaking way. about the Lakers and Nuggets, um, they play tomorrow. We do. And Talk to me. Talk Boom to me. Fantasy already has oh, lines good, out because there there is nothing better in this world than Boom Fantasy. Give we're us gonna lines. Give us we're lines, gonna Bills. do the MLB the Show giveaway. I'm gonna get the depositors tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that giveaway to be uh, redeemed in the next couple of days. But Boom Fantasy use code P A S. The link is in the description. Deposit ten or more dollars. You guys have been killing it with the super chats, but if you really want to support the show. Boom Fantasy or Patreon if it's not legal in your state. So tomorrow, 8.30, we got Lakers. We got Denver. Tell me who you guys want to see. What what player? We got Braun, AD, Jokic, just get, Schroeder, just Reeves. Me off, give, give me a line that piques your Talk interest. Talk to me about MPJ, man. MPJ? I, I can't pick one because that, that means I'm going no, one No, no, I just mean, hey, no. you, you say a line. You say Talk to me about under. MPJ. MPJ. 14 and a half points. I want it. Six over. rebounds, 22 and a half PRA, 0.5 steals, 0.5 I'm turnovers. taking over. 14 points. I'm here. That's cute. MPJ is, is I do a big I do think Denver wins game one, though. <laughs> big fa- I think so, too. Yeah, I think Denver Big factor is, is going to be MPJ because, you know, Jamal Murray's been eating. Jokic, of course. If MPJ is hitting his shots, that could be a decision. So I'll take the MPJ over. I'm the over king. You know, so. wow. Okay, hey, Tatum, no ball. Hey, I I helped you. you I did. I jinxed off him. Uh, Jokic rebounds, thirteen and a half. I'm gonna I'm go. I'm not touching none of that shit. No, I'm gonna go 51 over fifty-one and a half PRA. Good lord. No, I'm not. For, you know my opinion on PRA. Fifty-one and a uh, half is crazy. <laughs> He'll probably hit it. He'll probably hit it. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I'm going over on the rebounds because again, Jokic, he's just been dominant on the on the glass. But realistically, the Lakers. They allow a lot of rebounds to individual players, especially big men. So I'm going to go Jokic rebounds, uh, which is 13 and a half. I still feel like he will hit that over. I'm going to go Jamal Murray under what's the, what's 24 and a half. Mm-hmm. I think that our perimeter defense has been great. Yeah. I think we'll do a great job of limiting Jamal. Uh, and then for one more, let me get a Lakers one because I'm here. Did you just rip ass? No, no, no. That's a chair. You sicko. I'm going to go, hmm, damn, yo, this is tough. Big deal, though. Anthony Davis over three and a half steals and blocks. Mm. Okay. He's been a menace both stealing and Stops. obviously blocking, uh, blocking the, 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 what? the basketball, basketball, excuse me. Jeez, the balls. just stuttered crazy. Um, but, yes, absolutely. Anthony Davis over on steals and blocks, stocks. I'm going to go over three and a half. I'm going to go over Jokic rebounds, which is 13 and a half. And I'm going to go under Jamal Murray points, which is 24 and a half. Okay. Does Bruce yeah. Brown hit one three pointers at point five? Uh, taking it. I definitely think he does. Could. I'm I, taking it. Listen, I got the over. I, my my three leg parlay. I'm going Bruce Brown over one three pointer or point five. You know, so you point five three pointers. I'm going. I think he'll hit at least one. I'm going over on that. You know what, man? I, I'm going to go. I'm going to just go over on a lot of point fives. I'm going NPJ over 0.5 turnovers. I think he has okay. one turnover. When he does pass the ball. I was going to say, does he have the ball? Does he put the ball on the ground enough Sometimes. to get a turnover? He's done it a little bit last no, year. We saw it against the Suns for sure, but it's very limited. If he did it more, he'd be a dog. He already is a dog. He'd be even better. Damn, Steph had three kids already. Fuck. Yeah, and they all look like him. Nuts. Um, I'm going to go. Are you finished? No, I didn't finish. I'm going Bruce Brown, three pointers over. Mm-hmm. I'm going Austin Reeves over four assists. We're going like with that. that. And I think this is a Lakers game top to bottom. So I think <laughs> I'm going to go D'Angelo Russell over 14 and a half points. I'm about to be on my D-Lo right. game. Okay. Here we go. So I'm going to go MPJ points over. 14 and a half. Aaron Gordon over rebounds. Okay. And Bruce Brown over the point five three. There's no fucking way he doesn't hit a one three. I, I think that's crazy. I think this is going to be a purple and gold game, man. Okay. You think they steal game one? I think it's possible. I think it's possible Denver wins two, Lakers win two, and that's 2-2 two, two, game five. What do you got, Drew? I'm just angry. I'm fucking pissed off. Uh, game one, I think the Nuggets, that is that is a, a game they should not lose, realistically. I, would I be shocked if we won? Listen, you know, the answer is no. Uh, but I, still, I do think the Lakers get one in Denver, whether it's game one or game two. I think that our home court advantage is too strong. I think we'll go two games there. Game five will go to the Nuggets, and the Lakers will close out game six at Crypto. With all due respect, I was saying your boom fantasy, what you got. Oh, dude, I sorry. I said my line oh, already. Oh, my bad, my bad. That's all right. I, I went over three and a half steals and blocks Fence. with Anthony Davis. Over rebounds for Jokic. I believe it was 13, 13 and a yeah. half. And then over, excuse me, under points, Jamal Murray, 24 and a half. Okay, boom fantasy. Link is in the description. Hey, contract year, franchise tag. We need those numbers up. Support the show. Support us. Download Boom Fantasy, use code pick aside PAS. There was somebody in the comments of the Jalen Brunson segment that said 
Luca over Brunson is crazy. What the fuck? Uh, yeah, I was like, who even the then, hell said that? Even then, what the fuck is he talking about? No, I don't know. What do you, who's talking about what? He said Luca over Brunson is crazy. Yeah, which means even if he is, even if Luca hypothetically is, he's implying that Luca. Uh, no, he's saying no, that, he's no, implying he that, that one of us said, said that Luca was over oh, Brunson. I was like, we never said that, bro. Dudes don't be listening. Brunson, and sometimes yeah, maybe so. I it's so dumb. I'll be trolling. You said a lot of shit, especially on the TikTok videos. It would be like, we'll like do a Would You Rather, and the top comment would be, "It's so recency bias." And all of the players that we name, we don't take that player over. It's like people don't watch the video and like listen to who we're taking. 100%. They just think the name that we're naming are like players we're taking over that player all the time. It's like, I'm a big YouTube sense. comments guy. Twitter, TikTok comments, throw them in the trash. Yeah, TikTok, TikTok gets, comments are cool though. It's nasty. They're funny. Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, it depends. You I have don't to know. find the right TikTok niche. comments, they get nasty. You have to find the right group of people that it. The I'm video, gonna, yeah, there's, there's a lot of horrible people on TikTok. Some terrible yeah. takes, like <laughs> no, but also heinous shit. Do you guys said. know you're not supposed to spit after you brush your teeth, bro? It's so funny you mentioned that. Why? Because <laughs> I went, care. I went, I went to the dentist on Monday, and I don't know. He was just talking to me or whatever, and like he, he was he, like your breath stinks. <laughs> <laughs> he told me he's like you're not supposed to spit after you brush. Your, he's like you can rinse after like 20 minutes if you want. Uh, were, were you guys oh, aware you're of that? Like spitting like the the toothpaste. Like you, out. you brush your teeth, you spit. And then most people, you grab water. You, you know, rinse. rinse no, I'm saying, he's saying you probably spit the he's toothpaste He's saying you're not out. supposed to rinse. No, I know what I'm saying. I'm saying is he's saying we're not supposed to do that because we're like spitting the toothpaste out or something? Exactly. You're not, yeah, you're not supposed you, to rinse. Yeah, you're, you're supposed, supposed to, to spit out the you know, excess toothpaste. You're supposed to let the toothpaste sit on your teeth. Yeah. yeah. But I've been brushing my teeth wrong for 25 years. Everyone most of, most of us. <laughs> it's crazy, too, because you see in the movies that they'll brush their teeth, then they'll just spit and then go to sleep. And I've always thought, yo, they're crazy. Why aren't they washing their mouths? And then Joel told me this, and I said, "Well, this makes a lot of sense." Wait, so that is so it means you can't even put mouthwash directly after? You, no, you you can. You probably do it beforehand. I didn't ask about mouthwash. Oh. I'll be honest. You're supposed I'm, to put mouthwash I'll before you brush your teeth. Yeah, there's also a rumor, one that I don't follow. There's a rumor that mouthwash is a scam because it kills the healthy bacteria in your mouth, also. Mm. But you know, yeah, just make sure. Do I want to risk having bad breath? Or do I want to risk losing the healthy bacteria in my mouth? I'm using See the bad breath. I need, I need good breath. I'll Yo, be honest with you. Should be kicking. There's very few things worse than the... <laughs> 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 Got your ass. Got your ass. Oh, <laughs> good one. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. But yeah, don't don't rinse after you brush your teeth. They, so what was he like? I wonder in how your that conversation came about. He was saying your shit kicking like he told you why or something. No, I don't even know how he brought it up. He uh, was obviously I went in for a cleaning or whatever, and he just brought it up. Like, got Damn. a little bit too close, and he was like, Bro, was "Just to let mouth. you know, he's like, your shit's kicking right now. <laughs> just to let you know, you're, you're supposed to, <laughs> you're not supposed to rinse." <laughs> <laughs> It, it feels a little weird for a couple of minutes, but then honestly, I don't even think about it. Nah, yeah, it does. It does feel weird. Oh, yeah. so you have been doing it. The the no, since he's told me, I've not been renting. Have you noticed a difference? Not not really. I'm not. I'm not ever. Oh, oh, I was ready. <laughs> a little wider. Yeah. Looking yeah. nice. Yes. I'm not ever. So you close don't feel enough it at all. What do you mean? The toothpaste? Yeah. You feel it for like two minutes, like literally, and then I mean, I'm usually like drinking water or something after. Yeah. You know, you have to. You dropped in your mouth. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Like, bro. You have to be insanely right. close to somebody oh to God. notice their breath stinks. Like some people, like a girlfriend. Like, like. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm, not, whoa, 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 I'm, not no, I'm just saying, like, the only person that should be yeah, like I that, or, like close to you, is like Pardon. your girlfriend. Yeah, like a man shouldn't be like uh, you to smell their breath unless you're drunk. Because I was about to say you. Yeah, I'll be in your face. I, I'm yes. sorry. I, I apologize. apologize. Don't have I'm gonna keep doing it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, all right. Getting jealous here. <laughs> He's stop. He stop me. Heat Celtics preview. Now, I don't think we get to talk talk about this too much. You know, we know the Heat got here because of... So, I want to interject real quick, and, and this is funny because I'm going to be choosing the Celtics in this series. However, uh, Heat fans were very upset last podcast. And, and although last podcast had been doing unbelievably well. Nothing but respect thank you to guys. Heat fans. Uh, but the Heat fans were uh, extremely upset because they felt like they weren't appreciated last, po- last podcast at all. All we did was talk about how the Knicks lost this series and not about how the Heat won this series. So uh, I wanted to take this opportunity right now to to apologize on our behalf. Uh, even though it was very obvious, the Knicks simply did not play up to standard. But we can also give credit where credit is due. Took advantage. Miami Heat 
They they've continued to play great team basketball. Eric Spoelstra continues to be one of the best head coaches yeah, in the look, game. Look at the Sixers. The Celtics yeah, don't play well. Tim doesn't play well. They don't I, take listen, advantage. Bam Adebayo played excellent defense. He's also very. He was also very consistent on the offensive side of the ball. We didn't see Jimmy Butler be the dominant yeah, God, Jimmy Butler yeah. that we saw against the Milwaukee Bucks. That ankle maybe is a little bit is hindering his game slightly because obviously he's not putting up those numbers. Was still effective in this Knicks series. The, the team where it wasn't as effective from the three point line from the Milwaukee series kind of came back down to earth. That's really where the Knicks could have took advantage. But even still, the defense locked in. They played great team basketball. And sure. they are in the ECF. So now we can go on to the Heat and the Celtics. To, to summarize what Drew just said, want to apologize to Heat fans for saying that, for, for not talking about them enough. So Drew wanted to say, you know, although the Knicks did play like shit, the Heat took it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> exactly correct. Oh man. oh man, okay. Heat Celtics preview now to, to be to be serious. Um I got the Celtics in the series. Okay. How I many games? Think... <laughs> I'm gonna get a little disrespectful. I got it in five games. Oh, listen, I don't listen, I, I the Celtics <laughs> the Celtics, they have been an unserious team. They have been. Because they're on and off a lot of the time. God, so, so gross. If it goes six, I wouldn't be surprised. If it goes seven, I wouldn't be surprised. Because I, I think Eric Spolster is one of the league's best coaches. Cop out again. And I truly want to respect him. Going to go six, not surprised. Going to be seven, not listen, surprised. But listen, whatever the, what do you mean cop out? You're the, you're the guy last pod that said, I don't want to predict games. I just want to predict the winner. It's cool. So now I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm That's here. Barry. You I'm said here games. With games. No winner. That's way, way worse. worse. You said games. I can see Lakers in six. Yeah, I can nah, see that was one of the nuttest shits I've ever heard. Well, you know, life. I got the Lake Show. <laughs> <laughs> That's who I got. Um, Come from the guy who took down the, the Lakers jersey court. before we started this podcast. That jersey's better. I'll be honest. Than LeBron, Are you insane. The, the color, color is better for sure. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Come on, I got I got a Lakers book. Why do you think I got Lakers? Go to hell. Come on, Drew. I've been I'm rooting for Lakers all year. Calling you mean things, Joel. I don't want to do that. I root for history. Midseason turnaround history. I why like didn't you root for the Celtics last season? Couldn't do it, brother man. I'll be honest. I picked the, the Nuggets. I couldn't do it. Listen, this year basketball. We picked the Nuggets. This year basketball hasn't been my year. I'm we, all over the place. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm so, whatever for me at this point. It doesn't matter. <laughs> he's just finally admitted. Isn't that something? It's bro, bro we've come a know, long way. I already he's fucked like, ah, up. Fuck. Whatever Andrew's happens, been, Andrew's been lava up. hot. Yeah. I gotta <laughs> ride his wave. Lava uh, Lakers is is your is your is your slide right now. What do you mean? I pick. I predicted the Nuggets and Lakers to make the WCF. I predicted that the Celtics would get. No, everyone did. Sure, Miami. I won't predict that. <laughs> Listen, I'm, bou- that. I'm bouncing back with NFL. This is the year. With the Jordan Love take. Okay. It's going to skyrocket hey, this NFL shit. season. Um, I think NFL, I'm going to be locked in. But listen, I do have the Celtics, Celtics winning. Awesome. I I just think they're a better team top to bottom. I, I think although Spolstra has outcoached Budenholzer and Tom Thibodeau respectfully, respectively in, in back-to-back series, I do think there was a talent gap there outside of Milwaukee because Milwaukee does have the talent. And the Heat were just red hot from shooting. But that shooting has cooled down. And the Knicks could have capitalized, but we couldn't generate offense ourselves. And not only that, but Jimmy Butler's dealing with an injury. And I'm not expecting him to go berserk like he did in round one. I think that he's going to come back down to earth along with the shooters. And I just don't think Miami has enough firepower to keep up with the Boston Celtics. And that's why I'm going with the Celtics. It's not some groundbreaking analysis. I just yeah. think they're a better team. If you take just a 3,000-foot view, Celtics fans, I know you feel me. The Celtics make nothing easy, and the Heat make everything difficult. Spolstra is one of the best coaches, not the best coach in the NBA right now. Uh, Jimmy Butler, although he's cooled down, if he has put the team on his back, I'm not down that man. Bam Adebayo is a great defender. I'm showing respect to the Heat. I do have the Celtics winning the series in six games. Um, I'm really interested to see what Missoula does with this lineup. Because this two big lineup obviously worked fantastic. These last two games are best two defensive performances all season, in my opinion, especially given the stakes. But I think for the Heat, as they go more offense and as they have so many shooters, Derek White might be a better, uh, you know, matchup to to match their shooting. They really only go with one big, unless Kevin Love's out there, which which could happen too. Even though he did start, so maybe they do go with two bigs. Um, but that's the, the biggest question I have. Is he going to stick with the two-big lineup that's worked these last two games? I think he had to go too big because uh, Randall and Mitch. Miami. True. That also is true. So um, that's the biggest question. Love was starting what against, lineups, oh, well, what facts. Yeah, against Milwaukee. What, you're right, the bigs. You're what right. lineups uh, Missoula goes with. But I do think 
there was a bit of a turning point, as I mentioned previously in that game six with Tatum and the Jays and Jalen Brown. And I'm hoping Jason Tatum is keeping that same energy where he's going to be aggressive. He's going to get downhill. He's not just settling for pull-up threes, and he could use the the post game he has, the midi he has. So if he's able to score at all three levels like we know he is supposed to, this could be over in five if Tatum's really on his shit and the Celtics are hitting shots. But I think at this point, they kind of had a bit of a wake-up call. I think after that Game 5 loss at home to Philly where season's on the line, Joe Mazzulla should be fired, Jalen Brown gets traded, blow it up, you have to make all of these moves. And I think they heard a lot of that outside noise. They, there was reports saying that inside the locker room in Game 6, it was like one of the most quiet locker rooms that has ever been around all season. They've heard a lot of the, the shit outside. Um, but right now, I think I think there's a talent gap, right? Yeah, you yeah. have Jimmy Butler and Bam, but the Celtics, you know, they could go. They went seven deep against Philly these last two games. I think the bench gets expanded to nine. Grant probably plays. Hauser might play as well if they have Duncan Robinson out there um, yeah. to match up. Neither of them could play defense, so that'd be fine. Um, so I think they go nine deep again. But I think right now it's just the talent mismatch. Spolster is going to make it tough. Probably goes to six games. But uh, if Boston's locked in like they should, it should be over in five or six. I'm pointing at you, Drew, because last year. I picked the Nets to beat Boston, but I picked Boston to beat Milwaukee and Miami in the conference finals. He did. Okay. And I, I just wanted to notice that. I, I did hop on the train. We were debating with Riv Tatum versus Kawhi. Oh, that was that time, was it? It was. Which was second round or third? Probably second. It was, it was Probably a, after the Bucks. I think it was after the Bucks. So you had dignity last season. season. Oh, wow. With what? The Celtics? <laughs> Shit. Dignity's crazy. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Listen, um, I'm locked in football, NFL. I'm locked in right now. <laughs> I'm, listen, I've been a huge Western Conference guy this year. It showed clearly. Uh, I've been locked into basketball like I've never been locked in before. You're mentioning NFL season. That's not even a thought in my mind. Ironically, we're going to talk about Understandable football. From and come a on, and, and come on. Realistically, That's fucked up. <laughs> realistically, <laughs> Jessica's a Suns fan, so you know I had to root for the Suns. I had to. No, I got it. But you show. still, even still, you were. Choosing the Nuggets to go to the finals. It was a wink. The Suns was a wink, wink. Kind of like this Lakers one right now. No? So wait, you're not choosing the Lakers, is what I'm getting at. No, I have Lakers written on my. But you face. said wink, wink. So he's so he's it's a win, win for him. But the thing is, it's not. The viewers will know. The real Lakers fans who are tuning in right now. Mwah, first off, love you. Appreciate all the love you shown me. Show. There, I want you to go to hell. <laughs> uh, so to talk about the Celtics and, and the Heat series to get back to to serious conversation. You guys said a lot of facts right here. I, I feel pretty similarly, and it's a respect thing for, for Miami. The fact that they've made it to the Eastern Conference Finals, that's a W in and of itself. They completely overachieved eight seed to the Eastern Conference Final. That's a W. However, you just look at both these rosters next to one another. The shooting on from the Boston Celtics is, is should be better, especially with the way that Miami's has kind of come back down in that Knicks series as opposed to that Bucks series where it was impossible for them to keep that type of efficiency up series to series but shooting I'm going Boston rebounding the basketball I'm going Boston defending I'm going Boston yeah. although obviously Bam Adebayo he'll probably be the best defender in this series just top to bottom the Boston Celtics are amongst one of the best defensive teams in the league offensively I'm going with Boston of course Jimmy Butler has been fantastic Bam Adebayo has been consistent he's been around that 20 points per game he's been continuing to show you that Gabe Vincent has shot the ball very well. Struess has been relatively inconsistent, but obviously he's one of those guys that you still have to be mindful of. Duncan Robinson was not that same shooter that he was in that Knicks series. That's, that was pretty disappointing. If you were a Heat fan, you probably got slightly excited off that, that Milwaukee series. But hopefully, you know, if you're a Heat fan, you're hopeful that Duncan can provide some type of substance on the offensive side of things. Kyle Lowry has been very good. That's been a great boost for the Miami Heat as well. But I just think that on... Almost every single on every single front of the Boston Celtics, outside of coaching, which is a huge part of the game, especially with how great Spolstra is and how great he's been this entire postseason so far. I think star power is close. JB, JT, and Jimmy and Man. Yeah, I think it's a little close. I think, and again, this gets crazy because I'm. Trying, I do think JB is better than Bam. I'm Nuts, trying to be kinder but. to Bam. I'm trying to be. It's. It's JB and Tatum. Uh, excuse me. It's yeah, JB, uh, Jimmy JB. Butler. Butler yeah. Correct, Jimmy Butler and Jason Tatum. Those two. You go JB, and I think that there's a a gap until you get to Bam. Impact wise, it's, it's and close. then it's and then it's Brogdon and Marcus Smart has been great in these yeah, playoffs. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, I just call the star power. Horford hasn't been yeah. shooting the ball very and then well. Then it's Gabe Vincent. But defensively, you'll have. 
Horford and you'll have Rob Will yeah. playing defense on Bam. I just think that they just have an answer for everything Miami could throw at them. Of course, Spolcher's smart enough. He'll make adjustments. Yeah. I think for that, it'll be a six-game series, but the Celtics will ultimately come up on top. And we're going to have a Celtics-Lakers NBA Finals. Yeah, Listen, the NBA has been hinting at that for the longest. And if you think I am mad, I promise you, I am not at all. Give yeah, me history. It <laughs> it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome when we have the most championships ever against you guys. You're Wouldn't it be player. awesome? And it would be even better to come up on the show and say, eat me. <laughs> <laughs> eat me. Um, and it, it's, I feel so left out because last year it was, well, it was um, me. Warriors versus Celtics because he was the only Celtics guy on the show. <laughs> now, for you, there was me. Screw you. What? You just told me to eat me. Oh, true. Yeah, and now this it. year, it could be Dude, you can, Celtics, Celtics versus Celtics. Lakers. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna be like, hey, you got to get a team so up here. You, got, you guys Dude, have bro, always had a team up during the finals. You got to get a team up here. You've been rude to me. You've been rude to me. Fuck you, man. If you root for Denver, then Denver makes it. That can't be playful. It's going to be Anthony Edwards, man. Hey, hey. Come on. be the one to do it. You need a team up in the finals, though. Are you not getting nervous, Dells? That, you know, this might be a clean sweep depending on what Riv might choose right now. We all took against the Hawks, all took against Philly. Joe. Do it, do it, you know. Do it. Not the Celtics. Choose Miami. There's something about this story. Ah, here we go. <laughs> There's something about this story that is just so exciting. You know, Miami Heat, eighth seed, beating the Bucks. Well, you're out to choose the Nuggets. That's yeah, not that exciting, but yeah, I get it. You've never seen it, but um, <laughs> you know, this this right here, eighth seed. That was be- foul. Beating the Bucks. You know, um, see, you 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 decide to to make me a target. When in reality, this guy. <laughs> you see, how, but you see how he starts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he starts. But the thing is, I res- uh, I'm which he always starts. <laughs> he starts. He always starts. That being said, who gets more rude, me or him? Oh, it's rare for sure. So then what the fuck is this animosity towards me? What animosity? <laughs> fuck the Lakers. <laughs> Why not say fuck the Lakers? Screw you. Go ahead, Riff. I'm sorry for. I've only given them praise. Um, he's come. He's come a long way. He's, he's huh? Come, he's come a long, a long way. way. I mean, he's picking the Lakers now, I guess. But he's he's not choosing the Lakers. I he's mean, not. Three weeks ago, he picked the Grizzlies just cause. So he's come uh, a long way. He not said Grizzlies in five games. So he's come a long way. He's picking the Lakers over his team. Denver, you know, he likes Denver a lot. So. He's chose the Nuggets all season I'm long. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. Why? What, what, you of all people? <laughs> it's my buddy. Riv, you're going to do this to me? I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. That's fucked up. Thank that's you. fucked up, Riv. I appreciate it, Riv. Nah, nah, Riv. That's crazy. Until he proves nah, me nah, wrong, which show- he probably will. Nah, but Riv, I'm you just showed me a different doubt. side of you, bro. Say less. What, did you, what else? You, nah, don't, nah, you don't think if Denver goes up 2-0, he's going to be like... Well, the jig is up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give him the benefit of it. You this know is what? what you're... This guy of all people. We're in the Western Conference. I'm Carolina's somebody that's even killed. You know, they go up 2-1. I'm saying, listen, I'm going to... You literally I'm added a, me I'm a stand about my, the Kings. I'm going to stand my ground, and I'm going to still go with the Lake Show. Uh-huh. He didn't just saying? at you. He... he, he, yeah. he he made an entire ass yeah. anti-Riv King's Agenda tweet <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. that got over a thousand likes, and you're gonna choose to ride with him? You're done. You're under done. The bridge. Who laughed? Water last? under the bridge. Who laughed last? Fact. Don't let that matter. You laughed last. You laughed hard and loud. He did. He did. Um, just we're a- over. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> we talk about the Heat and the Celtics, man. Um, hard hit analysis. Let's hear it. Whew, this is a tough series for me. You know, I think because. You know, you know what the difference is with the Celtics and the uh, Bucks. I think the Celtics can kind of play similar to what the uh, Bucks play, but they have better wing defenders. You know, they have better guys in the perimeter that can defend. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Marcus Smart, Derek White. You know, they got a lot of guys that can do that, as opposed to the Bucks, who they didn't have that. So you can kind of stay home to the shooters of Miami. I'm with and you. I think that's the good thing about the Celtics. They have guys who they trust out there by themselves. You can stay home to these shooters, but um. You know, you've seen in the second round a kind of revelation of Kyle Lowry. You know, he looked really good. Oh, dear. Jimmy Butler on a bad ankle still gave you that production, 28 points, 10 rebounds, or 10 assists. Like, he still gave you that. And he, defensively, as a off-ball player, he was really, really fucking good. Um, <laughs> Don't worry about it as a slut. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bro, it, she, she that, was that was Wes. That was Wes. Wes. Oh. <laughs> Wes, Wes is fucking hilarious. Yo, Wes is an amazing he's, account. He's um, so damn funny. Six man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hilarious. I got the heat, man. I'm a I'm I'm a ride with the story. I'm a ride with the underdogs. I do think the it's shooting gotta be seventh game. Five? Hmm? Five? I don't do the games no more. The games is so mid. <laughs> Give me yeah. a ballpark. Ballpark? It's six or seven. Okay. It's, it is. If it's five, it's probably you guys beating them in five. But if they got to win, this got to be a dragged out, 
long series. They have to make they have to win within the margins. They have to limit the turnovers, fight for every loose ball, get the scrappy rebounds, you know, be aggressive, contest every shot. They cannot have no cracks, no weaknesses in their offensive game. I do think Spo is the best coach in the league. I think he'll have an adjustment prepared for everything Boston's able to go through. I think he may not have the personnel, but what he's shown is he can get the best out of these players. And that's what you need in your plays. You need to instill that confidence. And I think what he's done is instill nothing but confidence in this team. They've seen big teams. They've seen small teams. So now they're going up against a Celtics team, which they may not have the talent, but they know this team like the back of their hand. Yeah, they know the this team better than any team in the league. So if you know a team, you kind of know their tendencies. You know how they work. And this may be a new coach, but they know Jason Tatum. They know Jalen Brown. They know Marcus Smart. And the same thing on the other side. They know J- Jimmy Butler. So I think this is an interesting matchup. I'm going to go for the underdog purposes because I do think the Heat story is cool, and I do think they'll win this series. You know, Riv. Talk to me. I think you made a lot of sound points, and if what you're saying does indeed come true, that means that the Heat will be on par with the Knicks in terms of eight seeds that have yeah. made it super far in the playoffs. Because we made the finals. Who would you root for if it's Heat Lakers? Nobody. He would just say nothing. <laughs> He's not. Yeah. I have Lakers written on my face, man. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, oh nice full God. circle. Joke. I do think Bam is going to have his hand full, though. Cause no, I none none of you guys mentioned this, but I do think that what Tatum did at the end of game six in the fourth quarter and what he did in game seven, mm. historic game seven, is foreshadowing possibly what's going to happen moving forward. Mm, little run? I, I do think that Tatum needed this, this type of performance to gain confidence and to <clears throat> understand that he is that type of guy. And he said it after game six, I'm one of the best basketball players in the world. And him feeling that way. I understand. No, he is one of the best. Clear's your favorite player. Humbly. It's not even close. But I I get what you. And listen, after. Your second favorite player. Oh, yeah. He got it. And listen, after after an inconsistent season up and down, he hasn't been super consistent. I think this could be a stretch that this would change for him. And now he becomes that guy in a sense to the player that we know he has potential to ascend to. Because I think within the next two, three years, he's going to be a person that is constantly going to be in the MVP conversation. Yeah, listen, fourth and, plays well. And this can propel him to that. the NBA Finals. Respectfully. <laughs> Respectfully. I they think won't that, get there. Who? The, oh, the yeah. Celtics? Yeah. They won't get there. Yeah. And it's another reason why I have the Celtics, because <laughs> <laughs> unlike last year, Butler outplayed Tatum by a little bit, but yeah. I think, you know, he outplayed Tatum. <laughs> he would never let that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I still, I still don't think so either. I it, think, was close. it was close. I think Tatum's going to outplay Jimmy Butler this series by a significant margin. Mm-hmm. I think he is. Yeah, I think what's going to be most interesting is to see. I can't disagree. I, I already know the like ball that. pressure Spo is going to throw at Tatum is going to be unbelievable. Jalen Brunson just did it. Did what? what? I played Butler. I played Butler. That's a fact. But you Butler, said significantly. Been on some shit. I think you said Tatum, Tatum will be significantly. I think Tatum yeah, see, that's where you're going to I, I think Tatum about an average 30 plus this series. I do. Butler yeah. can Butler average can, 28, yeah, 10, and he can. 7. And I think his injury is a little bit worse than what we think it but is. But even yeah, with the injury, do. he still put up about 28, I was 8, say 9 was against the Knicks. It's true. But the Celtics have the personnel to double and triple team. I think he 28 against the Knicks. I thought it was like 25, 26. About two points off? I might be two points off. I mean, just. He had 25, 28. 27, 19, 24. So he was consistent. Be, yeah. He was getting doubled and triple team though. So that's why one, one of the biggest improvements Tatum's made. Excuse me. This playoff run is his turnovers. His turnover percentage has been cut in mm-hmm. half from last season. I think Spo though is going to throw every defender right when he gets the ball. What's he at? Uh, 25, uh, seven, six. Yeah. So, the bad angle. so I, I, I think Spo is really going to throw. You know. Kitchen thing at him, trying to get the turnovers, trying to make him to force decisions out of double teams and get those turnovers because if Tatum is going to be able to take care of the ball, he had zero turnovers in that 50-point mm-hmm. game, right? So if he's able to keep making those efficient, great rim reads, if he's able to make passes out of double teams, hit the open guy, make the open threes, then this should be you know a, a pretty... an easier series than it was last year when Tatum wasn't was having some struggles turning over in the ball. Did you see what Anthony Edwards said about Jason Tatum and his muscles? He was like, I played a song in real life. Like, nah. He <laughs> was like, he was like, we saw that like, Anthony Edwards. Yeah, yeah, he was facts. like, his muscles are like my flex. <laughs> it's like my flex. It's his muscles. Yeah, he yeah. does have some uh, enormous muscles. He does. He does. Well, he's salivating. Else. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah Tatum, sweaty, Tatum had zero. Really pops, <laughs> Tatum had <laughs> zero turnovers pop. that game, but before that, four, two. Now two, fifty-one four. and zero is insane. And not to mention the so that's cut in half what he did last year. Not to mention the variety of defensive coverages that he saw, and he was still picking Killing. it apart. Yeah, I he think needed that game. He needed that, and I think this uh, foreshadowing was going to happen 
this week in the NBA. Now, maybe you guys that. have one. Okay. If you guys don't have one, it's okay. On because I have one for, for all of us. Oh, my God. And this week in the NBA. Okay, my bad, my bad. It's just the biggest takeaways from the all-NBA teams. We, we didn't mention it last episode. Yeah, let's but talk about that. First team all-NBA, Luka, SGA, Tatum, Giannis, and Bead. Second team was Steph, Mitchell, Brown, Butler, Jokic. Third mm-hmm. team was Fox, Dame, LeBron, Randall, and Sabonis. So some obvious takeaways from this right now is that number one for me is that Tatum and JB are, are both Supermax eligible. Yes, sir. And JB can get a five-year, $295 million contract, which makes it locked in that I think he will be staying in Boston unless he just says, you know, he wants to go somewhere else. He, he's getting his bag. And, hey, people are questioning, do you pay this duo six hundred ten? This duo has shown that the floor is ECF. So you feel me? You pay that six hundred mil and you keep it pushing. Why are you being bitter? I said I agree. You're being bitter a little bit. Huh? Like that look in your face was like, a, I have no I'm not happy. I'm him. not happy. Yeah, what's, you do. what's the bitterness? We beat them. Okay. You always just throw jabs. Because it's fun. Fuck you. And <laughs> number two. <laughs> no bitterness, though. You guys are cool. Luca making first team crazy. <laughs> With all of due respect, I understand. Story. 32 eight and 8. Amazing Is statistics. that she making first team crazy? <laughs> he went farther. Playing. He went. He had. He he did go Less farther. Yeah, lower he expectations. Seeds. Way way, way lower, lower <laughs> expectations. He's Who should have made it over Luca though? Steph Curry. With uh, the games he missed. Donovan Ste- or Donovan? Correct. Donovan was not better than Luca this year. He wasn't I don't better. Think it's about being. Better. It wasn't about exactly. It is about being better though. Nah, I don't think so. It is. <clears throat> I personally would still have Steph. If you wanted to say Donovan, there's an argument to be made. I feel like Steph is a little bit better because obviously he's top four seed. He was the main reason why Golden State was in the position that they were, and his efficiencies this season were video game esque. Okay. I Number mean, two for me, I don't know if Anthony Davis just listed at center. I'm not sure if he, he was eligible for forward as well. I'm okay with Sabonis making it over AD because he had the better regular season. Wait, Top so to is, bottom. Is Sabonis better than AD? No, he's not. Oh. AD had better stats, but the impact Sabonis made, it is a tough third big. seed. All year long, I think that matters, I, and I think MVP. he should be recognized for oh, that season. I, I tweeted that when he won MVP. I said, MVP, congr- AD, congratulations to MVP. 100% at center. 100%, 100% center yeah. 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 I said, congratulations yeah. to MVP. To, to Actually, M- MVP. last year he was at 76%. Sorry, because the only... If, I said, congratulations to MVP. <laughs> you still keep stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I said, congratulations to MVP for okay. winning so MVP center, while not being a top He's been three. a center back-to-back years, pretty yeah. much. Is because he third? I know. Uh-huh. Is he not third? MVP's third. Oh, you said not being a top three. Uh, I said top three. Okay. Sorry, not being the best, I guess. I got you. Because I While think, I think between Anthony Davis and LeBron, I probably would have picked AD to make it over him if it was if he was listed at the forward spot. Yeah. I think AD deserved all NBA. If it was Jimmy. one Laker making it, he played, it should I have think, been AD. Didn't he, AD played more games than LeBron James? It might have been like a three-game difference. 56 so. is not saying much. Yeah, 56 to 53, I want to say that's what the difference was. Uh, LeBron but, played 55. So it was oh, whoops. So regardless... I think that I agree with you. I think that Anthony Davis on both sides of the basketball just he meant more to the Lakers this season than LeBron did. Although when LeBron was playing, he was averaging 30. It was just towards that back end of the season when he came back, really wasn't the same aggressive dominant offensive force that we saw prior to the injury. So I think that he made it majority for keeping the Lakers afloat while Anthony Davis was out and we played some solid basketball while AD was out, but we really obviously we're just a way better team with AD in the lineup. And when AD was playing this year, he was a dominant force to be reckoned with. And my third takeaway, missing stars. Devin Booker, Kawhi, Zion, Anthony Davis, Zion even James Harden. They're, they're, they're mostly like games. 40 games. Yeah, they're mostly mm-hmm. just missed games, except Harden. Kawhi played how many? A lot of good guards. 50? 50-ish? 50. That one I thought was a little bit oh, of no, a... no, wait. Booker played 53. Steph played 56. I, that, uh, that's what it was. Steph played 56. AD played 55. 56. LeBron 56. played 55. 55. So they could have made it. Uh, I don't know what the excuse Kawhi, was. Kawhi should have made it, in my opinion. Over who? I know Julius was Randall. dog shit, but he had a great regular season. He did, but the efficiency. Kawhi played 52. 50, 40, 87. Yeah, his efficiency yeah, was, was OD. Nuts. I'll be honest. He was on God mode the last wrong. couple months. Right, that's season. what I'm saying. Yeah. Record. But they were a top five seed in the Western Conference. You're, right. You're not wrong. <laughs> I fucking forgot. <laughs> That's what you mean. Yeah, my fault. That's, I There's literally nothing. forgot they were. Top and I said the war. I said Steph Curry was a top four seed. Obviously, I was wrong. The, no, the he's, six he was six, but yeah. I think it's gonna be interesting next year when these players stars. that we listed 
are not going to be eligible for that 65 game minimum. We're going to get some nasty. We're going to get Bridges, second team. LeBron, Steph, Jimmy Butler, Giannis. Yeah, Jimmy Butler was a game off. Played 64. Should Jimmy have been all NBA over Kawhi? Six and five. He shot 54 from the field, 35 from the three, 85 from the free throw line. Same thing, relatively. But they were the eighth seed. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, and Although was Jimmy one game did over, carry. 66. Jimmy carried. The whole regular season, Jimmy was just unbelievable. But I just think that he Kawhi did. was on just some of the best basketball we've seen Kawhi Leonard play in his career was this season. My boy PG, 24, 6. It's a shame he got hurt, man. 56 games. I like that for him, though. <laughs> <laughs> 46, 38, 87. That's cool with me. I'll take it. He's been doing his thing on the podcast, too. Love it. You saw oh, the last one with Debo? With facts. Debo is. You know, I actually have so a talented. quote from that podcast. So, uh, where the, was the, when they were talking about Bronny? Bron. Was this Bron. after but the Suns got eliminated or before? The DeMar one was yesterday. Today. No, the, the book was, one. No, 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 Debo. No, Debo. Oh, Debo. Oh, oh, my bad. So, so yeah, there's a quote talking about uh, Bronny, and that that would be my this week in the NBA when they said when LeBron said that hey, there's some cats in the league that Bronny's already better than, and Debo said there's a lot of ash players in the league. <laughs> there's two quotes he said about Bronny. <laughs> That's hilarious. It was the one about USC, and then that one. Oh yeah, you know there is. I knew there was a lot of whack dudes in the league, bro. Yeah, yeah, y'all, yeah. y'all be. If you can't call him dog shit, then dog shit. But, uh, Debo came out. I mean, he's an NBA. He's allowed. Remember, to. remember, I told you last year who was fat and shitty. <laughs> He's being rude. He won a game seven for us. But now look at him. How many threes did he hit? Seven? Yeah, I would say six, seven. Yeah, he was. You know what's my favorite quote? Uh, you don't have to be a baker to know that bread isn't good. Mm. Cook. You're cooking That's with cool. hot grease right now. That's cool. I like that. I read I like it on that. a comment of like somebody who's like, oh, you know, you're not supposed to be, you can't be talking about uh, this because you're not in it. It was not even like our videos or somebody else's, and I read that comment, and I was like, wow. You know, you use that. I was quote. like, "Wow, that's a great quote." He spit. <laughs> you don't have to be a baker. No, like that it. bread is bad. Oh yeah. So yeah. now, nah, but also, what happened on the podcast on on Paul George's latest podcast? They were talking about LeBron, and DeRozan said LeBron shot the one leg floater and made it. That was the end of my time in Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul George followed that up with saying, "That was my last time in Indy. He got me up out of there too. They swept us four row." <laughs> And Demar responded, and he was like, "We got swept too, shit." <laughs> <laughs> hey, LeBron's a swept. I like how they're so shit. transparent. Like, hey, he killed yeah. us. It's LeBron. LeBron. It's LeBron. Yeah, it's like, it's like, like anyone they used to talk about Jordan too. It's that's just like, why, hey, you lost to Jordan. That's why I don't think you know if Jokic when when he loses, he shouldn't. People shouldn't hold hold it over him. You know, as long as he plays well. I agree. If he plays yeah, well, there's nothing like, to hold see, over. Joel, Joel Embiid didn't play well. That's so why he's getting crucified. Yeah. But you know, Joker will play well. Who? Tatum shows up. No, I, I, he, I'm actually he terrified. Yeah, he I'm terrified up. because the <laughs> last two times that we've played, but it's the we've played you well, but Tatum has been yeah. but on the 10. Finals. Okay. Oh, he's talking crazy. How did LeBron's first finals go? What the fuck was that about? <laughs> finals go? Are you serious right now? They got something to do with saying. you, bro. They got something. They got what something the? Or so, no, no, no facts. Bro, how did second? How did second final? Dog shit. Right. So dog, no, but it was dog shit. No, oh, it's yeah. I'm, thinking, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Tatum shit. Cap, cap that's why he's doing. Cap shit don't matter. Cap shit don't matter. Cap shit don't matter. Don't matter, bro. There was a talent difference. He was too young. First, the first Miami. Second, the second Miami chip. You know, you know. He got caught. Now he's caught. Yeah. I was reading Thinking Basketball. This book by Ben Taylor. Who's the? He's the. Guy who owns a channel thinking basketball on YouTube. And he actually has a chapter in that book about the 2011 finals and how LeBron didn't read. actually play bad. No. And the stats on surface level, you know, people say that he had like a, a choke job and stuff. But when you dive in deeper into the numbers and like the offensive rating and all the advanced stuff, they were still at a high level I with think LeBron. Down the stretch, though, he didn't shoot the ball particularly well because they had a couple he didn't games. shoot it. Yeah, that, that a couple he was games just too passive. They could have won a couple of those games. It just LeBron just was young. Dwayne Wade was eating, so it's understandable why LeBron oh, we're was talking deterring. About 2011. I am. I am so sorry. Yeah, I, I know that. I know you. That's why you, when you said that he didn't play bad, I I didn't think that that's sorry. what you were talking about. No, he was just o overly passive because Wayne was just doing his thing. He just at the moment he forgot and re didn't realize he's LeBron James. That just left his mind, and that's why people look at it and think well, that's bad it's bad for LeBron. Correct. So Horrible. tomorrow is the NBA draft lottery. I mentioned earlier that we will be on Bleacher Report on the BR app doing a live stream. Prayers for magic. We're praying for the magic. Talk. Why the magic? Send them to, to the West. Magic together, baby. Okay. Okay. So Utah. 
Cool. Okay, I fuck with that one too. Like Lori, I fuck man. with that one too. So, and because this episode is probably gonna be released tomorrow, so I'm gonna or say Charlotte. I'm gonna talk in reference to tonight because it's gonna be released tomorrow. In honor of the NBA draft lottery, these are the top five preferred destinations I want Victor Wembanyama to go to. Number one is the Dallas Mavericks. Oh, that's like a what eight percent chance? Yes. Say point five. Okay. Some shit. That's number one. Number one, Luca, Wemby, if they get Kyrie back. And God forbid he goes five to one. What? God forbid he goes five to one. Oh, man. You want, oh, you want me to go to five? No, no, I mean, you already told me who <laughs> number <laughs> one okay. is. Yeah, My preferred it, list, okay. It, it, the jig's up. I'll just go number five then. <laughs> you know Num- one. Number five is the TikTok Indiana Pacers. Know. Yeah, of course. Indiana TikTok Pacers, five. Me. Number five for me is Indiana Pacers. They're at number five because they already have Miles Turner. I understand Victor Wembanyama is, you know, way more talented than Turner, but. I like the two-man game between Tyrese and Wemby if they could get him. And I like Matherin a lot, so that's a great core to build around. But they're number five for me because they already have a center solidified. Number four is the Houston Rockets. Ime Udoka going in there now I think will reset the culture. They're number four for me because I am a big fan of Alperen Shingun and Jabari Smith. I think it can potentially work out long-term. But, of course, if Wemby goes there – then Shingun is basically out of the picture. But I'm a fan of Shingun, so that's why the number four for me. Number three is the Charlotte Hornets. I Great. think they need a big talent boost. And if you can get Wembenyama paired up with LaMelo Ball, that would be one of the funnest teams to watch in the NBA. Number two is the San Antonio Spurs. They're already building something good. Where the magic? With Keldon Johnson, Devin Vassell. Sorry, buddy. If they can add in Wembenyama, that would be amazing. I don't have the magic up here because... I think Wendell Carter has shown that he's a Victor. he's a good center. I understand it's Victor, but you already have Franz Wagner. You have Paolo Boncaro. I think the match guard. <laughs> it's Victor. I you understand. I understand it's, it's Victor, Victor. But I look at the match and I say they're more of a point guard away okay. than a center away, and that's why with them I lean guard more than I do. Center. But Markel just had a great season. I understand he that, really but, did. but Suggs didn't. They need shooting. <laughs> they Suggs. need shooting. Yeah, smile, but no, man. I disagree with that. Towards the back half of the season, smile. Suggs was just, he was better than what he showed. Suggs was the fourth pick. Let's just. I agree. He's been disappointing. But he's he he's fourth. been. Yeah, he's fourth. He's like five or six. No, he was, no, he was he the was, fifth pick. No, he was, was, he was four. No, because Scotty was four. Scotty, yes. No, Scotty was three. No. No, no. Jalen, Cade, Mobley. Mobley. I apologize. I apologize. Yeah. I apologize. So, 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 but I said that, that's the same reason why I don't have the Pistons top five. Because they have Durin, Jaden Ivey, Cade, Durin. And I think Durin is like a mini Dwight Howard. He's why are we good. saying we're good? <laughs> why are we wait. saying we're good hey, when but, it's fixer? But this thing, back, I'm, not, I'm not saying they're Respectful. good. I'm saying these are the top five teams I want no, him to I go to. I get it, to. but you're saying. You are very objective to his list. What do you mean? I used the wrong word. You're uh, being very mean to his list. Judgmental? Yes. Okay, critical. Or that's another one. Well, it's I'm just list. saying. It's his preferred destination. Tell, tell them what sucks. Tell them, make your own. It's not, my, it's not my favorite <laughs> number, list. Means. How about make your own? And number one, the nope. Dallas. I'm going on Spurs still. Number two, the Spurs. Yeah, yeah. Because this is what I'm saying right now. Zach Collins. They need a major talent He's upgrade. Right, but oh. they have... Oh, come on. Let's be real. Whoa, whoa. You, you watch how you talk about Scene Hall alum. I'm let's, serious. Let's, let's be real. I take that personal. Let's be real. But I like their talent already. They have Wings and Keldon Johnson and Devin Vassell. They need a point guard, better guard play and center play. I think if Victor goes there... I would love that a lot. And number one for me is the Dallas Mavericks. It might be Luca versus Luca. It might be Luca and KP part two. But I think in order for Luca to stay in Dallas long term, they need to have something massive happen to them. And if they can get Victor Wembanyama in there, if they re sign Kyrie Irving, this team can be very fun to watch next year. And I know it's not a big chance it happens, but it's if like it does, it would be very exciting. It's not less than one percent. To be fair, it's not. Amari, it's like eight percent. Amari barely he, came they in. The at, tenth best odds. He's, or eleventh. Who? Dallas. Oh my bad. They have the Mavericks have a three percent chance to get the number one pick. The top three I want Victor to go to: it's the Orlando Magic, it's the Charlotte Hornets, and honestly, the Houston Rockets. Houston Rockets could use a nice boost, and I think that obviously Victor comes. Amari in. came in at six three. Mari Bailey? Yeah. Wow. Small. That is pretty small. Six is not bad, though. Six seven wingspan. Is he sh- oh, wow. Is he two guard or is he? The one. Oh, okay, that makes sense, though. He only has yeah, a six but seven the, wingspan. A lot of these top 10 teams, I wouldn't really want Wemby, from at least a fan perspective, to go to. Like Detroit, Portland. I don't like it because Portland has been historically a place where players just go and they get hurt. 
historically. What are your thoughts if Harden goes to Houston with Victor? He's the mentor. That would be amazing. That's why I was surprised to see Houston as your four. That's why it's intriguing to me. Harden goes there. Now you have Victor. You have the young guys. You get Jalen. You have, uh, uh, excuse me, Shangun for yeah. sure. That'll probably come off the bench. KPJ will probably come off the bench. Um, Jabari Tari Smith. Tari Eason. I, this team really gets exciting. If they if they get Harden, they're as high as two for me. Potentially one. So if they don't get Harden, it doesn't move you as much. And they don't get Harden because their, their point guard play is still up in the air. And get ready. For Joel to be back in Houston like he never left. Harden goes back there. Of course I'm back in yeah, Houston. Yeah, I know. And I with Ime Udoka leading the ship, let's go. We got a re- we got a union ship right here. We got a relationship so, going dude, on. Dude, you have a free end to Houston. I do. I thought I'll be your West Houston. team. That'd be cool. Yeah. I have two teams now. Have nothing wrong with two teams. East-West. Like that's not wrong. Huge gap between <laughs> <those> <laughs> Nothing wrong with well, that. You, no, that's I mean, you have like six in each conference, honestly, right? No, I do what I want. But I'm saying for you, like, it's nothing wrong with that. My boys at the six-man show allowed me to become an honorary Magic I fan, fuck with so. the Magic. I just, the oh. Magic with Paulo and I was Victor posted. and Franz in like nah, two or three think? years. Me, me and Wes, oh, we got a, a deeper-rooted bond. Okay. Me and Wes, we like brothers. Oh, but who's West team? Warriors. Oh, fact. He's a Denver yeah. fan too. No, he's a war- we, That's why we bond. No, me and me and Wes, we we be on Twitter every day. What do you mean? He don't even. What do you mean? To Wes. I got like. Do you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> he keeps. I'm telling you, yeah. everyone's watching the podcast. They know no his true feelings. NFL schedule takeaways. They released their schedule not too long ago, sure. and our biggest takeaways. I mean, let's just talk about the first game of the NFL season, Ugh. which is the Detroit Lions versus the Kansas City Chiefs <clears> season <throat> opener. Now, listen. Nothing but respect to the Lions and what they did in the second half of the season last year, but there were so many better options for the Chiefs to open up the season against. Denver. And the Lions, they are not a proven team yet. They're not a proven team yet. I understand the hype for them, but let, let's pump the brakes. This team has not accomplished nothing yet. Let's pump the brakes on this team. Let's pump the brakes last on Last summer it. saw Jared Goff versus Patrick Mahomes. wasn't too bad. Sean McVay. Here's the thing <laughs> that I, I, I just don't like the disrespect – because you say that this team hasn't accomplished anything. They haven't. Da- oh, for sure. He looks great there. Uh, Dallas Cowboys didn't accomplish anything, and they opened up the season against Tampa Bay. They did it because it was a good game. And that was an amazing game, really, we saw offensively. Okay, that congratulations. They were a game. O- no, that opening game against Dallas, Tampa oh, Bay was a great game. The Bucks. The Bucks. Sorry, yeah, I it's all right. It's fine. Last year's Rams-Bills was terrible. Yeah, it was That's horrendous. What I was that was yeah, horrendous. I, I remember with that one. Josh. Yeah, Josh Jeez. ate. Uh, Josh ate. Wait, was it? Because I remember the opener. No, it wasn't the, that game. The, the, the Cowboys dog and shit? Bucks. I remember the Bucks torch like uh, embarrassing. It, them. it was an offensive game. It was amazing. Let me Jam- see. Hold on, hold Amari hold on, hold on. Amari had two touchdowns. I think he had like 180 yards. He was insane. Um, dude, it was 19 to three. No, Bucks Cowboys <laughs> no, September that, 11th. That, it was, it was 19 to three. three. That was the dog shit game. What am I thinking yeah. of? Not that bullshit. I promise you. No, two. I would think that was last season. No, because nineteen and three wasn't that. Um, no, Dak had that was this was twenty twenty two. Dak had one hundred thirty yards. Twenty twenty one. They yeah, this was twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty one was the opening game. Correct. Twenty twenty two was last year. That's yes, where, that game was poop. Yeah. yeah, this was Tampa and Dallas. Twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. That's what I'm saying. Going to twenty. This was this was Sunday night football ago. last year. Oh, 20- I'm just saying. That I do remember the. Bucks okay, that's fine. Yeah. You're right. You're right. I'm thinking of two Dak years. Was dog shit. Yes, yeah, that yeah, game. No, but no. Dak got hurt. Yes. He still had 130. That's yards. when Cooper Rush came in. Yeah, yeah. He came in for um, 13 plays. Okay. Did you look up 2021, the game? The, you're talking about season openers? Yes. CD Lamb had two receptions and 20 on yards. This was his. Again, that game was horrendous. That was I, Sunday Night Football. I don't know what these guys are looking at. Yeah, I don't know why it's taking them so long. <laughs> no, I stopped. I didn't look. I was just I'm looking at the stats of this game. All right. 2021, 29 31. And what was Amari's stats? Just because Riv just made me. 13 for 140 and 2. 140. 140. Well, you said it was a, a poopy-ass yeah. game. Well, this one, you were right. I, listen, all respect to the Lions, I just feel like there were better options. And that's something that I didn't even get to. AB, but 120 but yards in touchdown. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're yeah, talking yeah, about AB's viral. in the fucking league. That was so long ago. <laughs> that's when, <laughs> that's when Tampa was lit. Yeah. But throw some respect on the Lions' name. Last year, one of the best offenses statistically. Yes, their defense was not great to start the season, but they ended up getting it together. And with the offseason moves that they made to to bolster up that secondary, we're all expecting the Lions to play a much more consistent level of football this season. There are expectations now in the Detroit Lions. Are you wrong, per se, that they haven't accomplished anything? 
No, but it just comes across a little bit rude. Understand that this young Lions team is exciting. You said respect to the Lions. I think that's fair. Uh, nah, I know. Been, I don't think it's like rude. I, I, I just, I think you that... Heard the, you heard the tone in his voice. It sounded a little think, bit more just like, ah, who he cares? He was talking a lot of shit about the Lions before we I know, the show. I know. It's not, it's not That's rude. why when he started no, with the, not. all respect to the Lions, I was, I really wanted to interject, <laughs> but I understand Listen, we, we got to do a show. I've seen people say that the Lions are the third betting favorite to go to the NFC Championship game. I think the Lions are a mid-tier NFC team. I don't think they're a top they're tier a NFC team. Wild card team. They're they're the the three best. So grade teams, them A through F. You're giving them a C. I think they're a B minus. Respect. I'm, I'm the same. I try, I try to get him team. there. Yeah. Try, he said mid tier, so that's yeah, what I had to go see. Yeah. But I I look at the NFC: Eagles, Niners, Cowboys, easily top three. Yeah. That fourth best team, I would lean the Seahawks. I think they they improved I'm the roster a lot this off season, and, and then the Number the Lions. Five. The Lions, I think their team is jumbled up with Minnesota? the Saints. <clears throat> their defense, uh, other mid team. We'll see. I think the Falcons can be just as good as them this year. The there, Panthers there's a have bunch a chance. Mid level teams in the NFC, but there's been so many other teams. I mean, like there's so many other teams that deserve this spot. That's that's rude. I'm sorry, Lions fans, but I'm excited because you get Jameer Gibbs, spend the 12th overall pick. Let's see how you use him. I wish Jamison Williams was playing in this Project. game so we could see him fully healthy, hopefully play more than seven snaps. But unfortunately, he's suspended the first six games. I think the biggest issue is you're giving Andy Reid fucking five months to, you know, whip up a game plan against this Detroit Lions defense. I think it could get ugly. I mean, I wouldn't surprise me if the Chiefs scored 30, 40 points September. They're going to be home, right? Yeah. So I, I think it could get ugly because defensively, Offensively, the Lions are going to be able to score. Their defense, I know they made moves at corner. We were talking before the show. It's a lot of Kansas patchwork. City, yeah, and even if you did, like, it's tough. Andy Reid, not even I'm a bye, misery, off yeah. season. Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I think it's going to be like 40 to 22 final score or some shit, bro. So, Drew, you're so high on the Lions, right? Oh, uh, Dells, you're going to be the counter, right? right? Drew is going to predict the Lions' record. What the fuck? After we're this we're season. so many months away. Why are you doing this listen, to me? Listen, Man up. We listen, know the, the you, moves have been made. There's no real. Come on, life. we don't know what's gonna happen. Listen, it's I'm gonna go. I'm says. gonna go through the schedule. I'm, I said I'm locked in on the NBA, and this guy goes and says, "Hey, let's get Drew at his lowest point." NFL. Listen, I, I'll be fair to you. This is not your final prediction. You can make revisions to it. All right, let's sweet. just. This is just <laughs> a breeze through, right? All right. Why not? So, Lions schedule. What will the record be Lost in the 2023 one. season? Week one, Chiefs. Loss. On the road. You're counting those, right? I am, I am. All Week two, Seahawks at home. They're in, they're at Detroit. Lions are home. If I say at home, it means Lions home. Got it. Uh, I'm going to go Detroit there. Win. One, one. Lions versus Falcons. Lions at home. I'm going to go win there. Two, one. On the road versus the Packers. Ooh. On the road, I'm going to give that one. Although they did win. Week You'll probably 18. give them a split. I'm going to yeah. go split. So that's fair. I'll go, I'll go loss here. Versus the Panthers at home. I'm going to go win. At Tampa Bay. I'm going to go win. Four and two. At Baltimore. No. Loss. Four and three. Versus the Raiders at home. Oh, I'm going win. At LA versus the Chargers. Oh, you should win. At Chargers? Oh, I thought you said Rams. I'm <laughs> so sorry. Mm. I'm going to go loss. Five and four. Versus the Bears at home. I'm going to go win. Six and Respect four. us. Versus the Packers at home. I'm going to go win. Seven and four. At the Saints. I'm going to go win. Eight and four. That's a tough place to win. At Chicago. We lost. Lost. Versus the Broncos at home. They beat us at the end of the year. Sitting at eight and five right now. He's he's hurting with this one. I'm... What are you picking? Dead skin? (laughs) Pick a fucking team. (laughs) Come on, bro. Why you got to fuck call me out on that shit? Oh, fuck. That one's tough. Is it... It is because you don't know what the offense we're going to see from the Broncos until it, the season actually starts. You would starts. know better than all of us. That's why I say you don't know what offense you're going to get until we see the preseason. It's supposed to be the, the fan club, Russell pick Wilson. It, it, I, guy, I believe season. in us, but I need to see nah, us in the like preseason. It. It's a first year head coach. It's Sean Payton. I get it. <laughs> if, I, I'll tell you what, though. I will be through the fucking moon if Sean Payton comes in. And if he's Sean Payton, then we're a playoff team. Yeah, so Sean we're at eight and four, coach. correct? I'm gonna eight go. Eight five. I'm eight gonna, five. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna go loss here. So it's eight, eight and five. Six. Oh. Eight and six. Are we no, sure? Eight six. Okay. At, Minis- that's up. at Minnesota. <laughs> at Minnesota, I'll go. I'll go loss here. You'll split with them too. Eight yep. Seven. At Dallas, Ooh, I'm gonna go loss. Eight and eight. You're back and to, to finish off one. the season week eighteen versus the Vikings at home. I'm gonna go win. Nine and eight. 
Nine and eight. They were eight and, and I much? and I was biased towards my Broncos, so it could be the nine or ten wins. <laughs> <laughs> you also said win at, at New Orleans. That's a tough game. That is, but it's just what what are we going to get from the Saints? Their defense is going to be solid, or what we're expecting is their defense. Sh- their to defense, be defense solid. should be top. That's 10. What, I agree. Yeah. I would, uh, um, but you look at the offense. Derek Carr's their first year. Their offense was sketchy last year. I know Alvin Kamara, his situation still up in the air. Michael Thomas. His injury history, you don't know if he's going to be ready 100%. Hmm. Of course, you believe in Chris Olave. Offensive line's all right. Um, but overall, I just think that that's a definitely a winnable game for Detroit. It's funny how this like schedule takeaway turned into a Lions record <laughs> prediction. You know, that's fine. It's looking fun. at my teams in the NFL. Just to remind me, Eagles, Bears, Browns. Bills. 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 Yeah, yeah. Uh, looking at my Browns specifically. Jets. First eight weeks, tough. Big, big test for Deshaun. You got... Bengals, Steelers, Titans, Ravens, wow. Niners, Colts, Seahawks, Cardinals, Colts Ravens, Steelers. It's a big test for my boys. Steelers That's odd because the Browns actually have the seventh easiest schedule according to most of it is their division. NFL strength of schedule. Well, that division is division. stacked. It is. And and even if you think that the Steelers are going to be an easy game, that is not that's the a, case. That's a split. That is after, not the case. After it kind of gets easy. You know, they got the Rams, Bears, but then they got Jets, Texans, Br- Bengals Jets again. Not, buddy. No, the Jets are a tough team. I'm talking about the rest. The Broncos. This is a test for my boys, man. Deshaun, man. Hey, they got they got the roster to do it. If Deshaun is back to Deshaun level football, he will they, be. They could win that division. It's just a matter the, of how the great AFC he be. North is one of those divisions that is super hard for me to predict right now because the Bengals are the Bengals and they have Joe Burrow. As long as you have Joe Burrow, he's you looking can muscular. Accomplish anything. He's looking Blazing. very fine right now. He's looking very good. Fine, it's crazy. The Baltimore Ravens, I love Zay Flowers getting Odell Beckham Jr. I love that move, too. The defense is going to be elite. And getting Todd Monken now going from run heavy to pass heavy, I think will benefit Lamar tremendously and hopefully keep him more healthy down the line. But then the Browns. Like, the Browns have gotten so many players defensively. They've gotten Okoronko from um, no, Tennessee. Tennessee. Houston, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right. That's what I'm saying. But the Browns traded for Darius Smith. Smith. You now have him opposite of Miles Garrett. Their defensive tackle, you now have Davin Tomlinson. They got um, Oko Okoronko from the Texans, who's a fantastic underrated edge rusher. And this secondary is one of the better ones in the league. So I think the Browns could take a big time leaf. If Deshaun goes back to 2020, Deshaun Watson, they they should win the division, in my opinion. Like, you, you look at this roster, I mean... Corner's pretty set. Got good safeties. The There's front four is going to be solid. Front seven even. Um, Donovan Peoples-Jones had a breakout year last year. We just got Joku Elijah Moore. Was great. Elijah Moore just is there. Amari Cooper Coleman. was fantastic. Who's Nick better, Chubb. Elijah Moore or Donovan Peoples-Jones? Donovan Peoples-Jones. Uh, I like Peoples-Jones. Moore had more. Uh, he has a higher ceiling, though. I like Peoples-Jones a lot. DPJ had 800 yards last year? Or yeah, something like that. He's different. Offensive DPJ line. DPJ is nice. This you know who's different? really good. And Joku. And Joku's solid, too. Mad nice. Mad nice. Deshaun's back, man. If he's not back, dude, this is his fault. Yeah, right. that's we'll the fact. They, they, they got the Joku roster. on, like, every single dynasty team. <laughs> they got the roster. They got the got talent. The weapon. We got Nick Chubb. The division's just tough. Back in the, the Jets are scheduled down. for five primetime games. No, football league. First time Sunday Night Football no. in 12 years, 13 yes. years, right? So let's talk about that, okay. Dallas, because the New York Jets, I mean, not only did I say we was getting Aaron Rodgers, I predicted that. You did. But getting Aaron Rodgers, I mean, how the tides have shifted. Last year, we had one primetime game Thursday night, which we know that's not Jets, really primetime. That's gross. that's like a throwaway primetime game. That was the Chris Traveler game. Yes. The Jets this year, five primetime games. A Black Friday game. First time ever. We're scheduled for it hey. against the lowly Miami Dolphins. Yes, sir. And oh. then we have four 4 p.m. games. We're going to be in front of a national televised audience. Aaron Rodgers is motivated this year. He's hungry, <laughs> and he's smiling. I, I've been seeing pictures I've of there, man. Zach Wilson smiling. <laughs> Zach Wilson smiling in practice, too. He's soaking up all that knowledge from Aaron Rodgers. But Aaron Rodgers, with our defense, hopefully he figured out that Quinn and Williams situation and we give him a contract because he deserves it. Listen, the Jets is scary this year. That Dallas. first six weeks, though, Reed, do you have it in front of you? We have Buffalo, the Patriots, Dallas, the Chiefs, and is week five Philly? Yeah, the Jets yeah, is- never beat us. Bills, Cowboys, Patriots, Chiefs, Broncos, Eagles. Broncos, Eagles, in Philly? and the bye. And it's in Denver. Is it in Philly? Home, we're home. Yeah, we're you, home. Have, you have we the eighth hardest schedule. It's tough. It is. Good but, luck. Good I luck. mean, hey, if you're a Jets fan. You know who has the first? New England. The Eagles. 
No, it's I have right here. New England has the hardest schedule. Uh, Bills have the second hardest. Yeah. I may be looking at something different. I'm looking at this from what the NFL posted. Brother man, we have Patriots, Vikings, and Buccaneers first two weeks. Three and zero. Yeah, um, we have Commanders and Rams. Hey, the Jets first first six weeks are tough, but you got Aaron Rodgers now. You're you're part of that group. That small group of having an elite quarterback. So, obviously, Philly and the Chiefs are probably the two best teams in the league. But everyone else, you should be able to beat Buffalo. Niners? You should be able to beat Dallas. We don't play the Niners. Oh, okay. Um, but basically, all those other teams, New England, the, the fucking drought <laughs> better end this year. If we lose twice in New England, that's going to be hell. It has to end this year. Yeah, so outside of Philly it and has the Chiefs. To. This was personal. I'm, I'm you ex- see my whoop. I'm expecting every game to be close. Expecting it's to win those personal. Games. And if we could get to that week seven bye, be three and three or four and two. That second half of the schedule lightens up a lot compared to those first Remember six when weeks. We thought the opposite last. Oh, well, the same thing last year. With Open, opening of the yeah, because we, we played that AFC North. We played the Packers. It just it and goes tough. to show how tough it is to predict because you look, mm-hmm. you're like, this is tough. This is tough. The Browns, right? And then it comes around. You're like, oh well, the Packers are kind of mid. The Steelers won like nine games. The the Browns were fine, but then the Sean came back and they were worse. So you should have lost to the Browns, to be fair. Yeah, Joe Flacco. Yeah, go. him. Go, <laughs> Garrett Wilson, breakout game. Yeah, him. Fucking love those guys, man. We'll Whenever again. The Dolphins have an insanely tough schedule. Second toughest in the league. I, I was gonna say, man, are you huh? sure about that? For your team. They do have a top five hard uh, schedule. What I'm looking at is you know, Patriots, was... Bills, Chiefs third, Raiders fourth, Dolphins fifth. I I, I enjoy the fact that you root for us. You know, I respect that about you. But when it comes to the AFC, I have nothing but hatred for you. Sorry. You're this fucking Josh Allen glazer. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> no jokes about that. I am. You Top guys one. lost to Zach Wilson last year. We made the playoffs. Can you Sick. say the same? You lost. You made the playoffs. Uh, it's based on win totals. You lost. When last time you made the playoffs? Seriously. Doesn't matter. It, no. When's the last time you won Super Bowl? Eagles? We Bills. won a couple no, years ago. Bills. No, no. <laughs> it's all right. We'll see you week one, buddy. No, this is a, this is a uh, May... Four weeks, four four months out of NFL season. Hot take: The Buffalo Bills missed the playoffs. Oh, spit! Is that a hot take? That means Miami makes tough. it. It is. That doesn't mean Miami makes it. That oh. means the Jets win the division. And so my, two teams don't make it in. Uh, well, at least two are making make the playoffs. You think division. so? Yes. It, it could happen. I, b- three teams in the AFC North can make it. That's two two teams or three in the AFC West. Only can make ones it. making it in the South. But three I teams. Know, but th- AFC West: Chargers, Broncos, Chiefs. The Chargers could miss the playoffs. The Broncos also could miss the playoffs. The Chiefs are the only it. like yeah. Broncos are making it. The Bills are better than Broncos. No, they're mm. not. Yes, they are. They have a better quarterback. Our defense is better. That matters a lot. They do, but coach is better. They have a better quarterback. Offense but is top better to for bottom, the Bills. The Broncos roster is better. The Bills' offense is better. Barely. Ah, uh, it's Josh Allen. So yeah, Stephon Diggs, Dawson okay. Knox. That's it. Gabe Davis. And the Bills have Dalton a top Gabe. five hard toughest schedule this season. Top five toughest schedule. Javante is going to be ready for Week One. Javante. Tim Patrick back. Judy him. Mar- Tim Patrick's Marvin cool. Mims. Colin Sutton him. Marvin Mims Judy's ready cool. for prime time. Sutton's cool. Diggs is amazing. None of them are Diggs. Yeah. Facts. Sean Payton though. Sean Payton is big difference. Amazing. What's interesting though is that offensive line clears. Josh Allen. The Russell Packers. <laughs> Fuck, am I supposed to do with that information? <laughs> so I'm the like Chiefs fucking first ballot Hall of Famer. All right, you better watch how you talk on his name. Because of uh, his Seattle life, not his Denver life. Wait till this year. I'm waiting. The Chiefs if you weren't with us through the bad, we don't want you through the good. Do you want oh, me to play the video? Was no. I with you through the good? You want me to get emotional? I'll <laughs> cry right now. What did you say, you bastard? Was I with you through the good or the bad? You weren't. He was not. You weren't. I'm going to stick here. Actually, I'm the only one who picked you when to make the playoffs. Yeah, do you want to fucking cookie? fucking suck. <laughs> you legitimately suck. I'll really beat you up. It's like you're mad because you're dog shit. <laughs> I am. I am, but we won't be this year. Maybe. maybe now, not. Chiefs, Bills, Chargers, Cowboys all have six primetime games. And despite losing Aaron Rodgers... The Packers have five. Jordan Love. This means Jordan Love's going to get his time in the bright lights. Mm. Soak it all in because Jay Love is coming this season. He's ready? He's ready. Drew, tell me how you feel about, I don't care. How do you feel about the Giants? What was it, seven of their first ten? Seven are on the road, on the road bro. Like, what was Did the what NFL, was NFL screw over the Giants? They did. Your, they Daniel, did screw them your over. Daniel Jones agenda might be cooked. No, it's not. He'll be ready. It doesn't <laughs> One matter. year after, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just keep, continue, keep hating. Keep hitting. Well, the good thing so is that, you know, wrong. it's only a two-year deal. So this year, they'll notice that, oh, he's actually not that guy. And then next year, maybe the schedule lines up. So funny because you always cool. just said he was, you know, he was good. He's a good he's a good football player. And now you're just completely on the other side now. After four years of watching him? Yes. What do you mean by that? 
when he came in as a rookie, I was high on him. I was. No, no, no. no this the is second not what I'm year, I was still about. high on him. No, yes. no. Prior to last season, you believed in Daniel. You said he was good, and then he started to play well, and then I was supporting him, and then you completely flopped. I didn't get off the Daniel Shut Jones up. train after he started playing well. You're Why would done. I do that? Because you're you. <laughs> he starts playing well. I'm like, oh, I'm you. done. <laughs> I'm not going to move for this guy. I was That's before. what you did. I, what do you mean? My, the, the, my apology for him, Daniel Jones, is down on the internet. So wait, the off. <laughs> hey, yeah, oh, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. The off this past off season last year, weren't we previewing the Giants? And I wasn't high on Daniel Jones going into the season. I don't really remember you being that high on him. We were talking about Tyron that Taylor. Too, that, yeah, and I remember, remember telling you guys you guys were yes, fucking yes, yes, smoking yes. dust. No, we were wrong about that for sure. But that just proves that I wasn't high on Daniel Jones coming into it's the just season. Just great to see. Sure. Hey, Giants have seven wins. Made the fucking playoffs. Giants were my saving grace they last year. Nine or ten and two, last of year. course. They won 10, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the Giants? You said he was phenomenal. Games they, won? they won nine or ten. You know what's years. crazy, though? You love to mention 0-5, but you failed to mention that Buffalo game in Buffalo in the snow. You failed to mention mm-hmm. that. I didn't think he played a good game. That was on my birthday. I know. That shit was fucking electric. That, that, was that game was fine. When you didn't, he didn't play a good game? I don't think so. All right. This guy loves to say he watches film. It, it just boggles <laughs> my mind when he says shit he like that. He had a negative EPA that game. Okay. EPA. Here we go. Here we go. He had a negative EPA. Oh, <laughs> EPA Shut comes up. out. Shut up. He did. He did. He, he did. And, and Dell's even. Yeah, DeAndre Swift had the, high, the highest EPA for a running back. Did he really? One of yeah. Yeah, I think he was like two. Nuts. And you're high on him. But again, that doesn't fucking matter to me because I you're want. not. Yeah, that's what I mean. So what does EPA so matter? Using, it does matter a lot. It's like what everybody uses for. I don't care what everyone sense. uses. It's like I'm the, not everyone. It's the most I'm accurate, Andrew Vallette. It's the most accurate. Advanced right, well, the, you're right. Tua so was number one in EPA. So why don't you respect him? Yes, he had. I it's the most you, accurate on, on paper. He had a great season. It went nine seven sure. and one. Oh, uh, the Giants. Yeah. A lot. A lot of that. Five. Commanders. No Washington. Yes. Yes, yes Commanders. In that 20? December stretch, every game he had was negative EPA, though. Okay, and against the Bills, the he was really what, what good. Brought, what brought him up so high was a, a lot of cupcake defenses he faced. And first half of the schedule, yeah, yeah he was that's what happened. Versus the Bills, though, what he he had like a wide open touchdown to, hey, but to Waddle or to Tyreek. the Dolphins' benefit, a lot of their road games are early in the season, so to was probably not going to have as many snow games or bad weather. It's fucking hilarious. He can't play in chilly weather. But he did his thing against Buffalo, so that's was, why he killed narratives. Game. Facts. That game was amazing. They lost, But when though. the snow know, started coming like, down. They were Facts. When the snow started coming down, the Bills was, kicked off. They kicked the shit, field goal yeah. to win the but game. But are we not remembering what happened, though? Because the one touchdown he had to Tyreek Hill was on a slant. It wasn't Tyreek. It was Waddle. It was Waddle. Which one was the one where he threw it up to him? He under On the right-hand side, and right? And he still... And that I, was it was Waddle. Wa- it was, yeah, Waddle still caught it, and it was clearly underthrown. You don't even remember and, what and happened. And Drew said he jumped backwards or some shit. Yeah. yeah. Like that was, was a different game. Nah, that was the Buffalo game. That wasn't that go, one. Go watch two of his touchdowns in that... Go watch two of his big-time throws in that game. Second one? First one. The first oh, one sec- was uh, horrendous, second one, second one. man. It was fucking yeah, first one was in degrees. Miami, yeah. Miami we'll shouldn't see, be this playing year, football this year, that type of weather. Year. Fucking Josh Allen misses a wide-open touchdown by, like, six feet. They need to get a dome. <laughs> it's fucking hot out there. You know what they do? The The opposite team is always on, like, the side where the sun is, and the Dolphins what? are in the shade. Yeah. I'm not big on wide-open slant touchdowns. Does it move you? Mm-mm. Not even or close. Or underthrown 50-50 balls mm. that your receivers that are top 10 So it's just a Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, Jalen Waddle I need Mike Almond McDaniel Merchant? Though. Unfortunately. What a crib. That's that's yeah, what the said. He wasn't states. a good quarterback. Now he's a slam merchant. They're they're very fast with their receiving core. Od. Not only Waddle and Hill, but now you have Devon O'Shane, Chosen Anderson. <laughs> I forgot they got Robbie. <laughs> yeah, there was a clip of him. Yeah, his new name is Chosen. Yeah, Chosen yeah. now. That's hard. Braxton Just Barrios, wrong guy. Braxton Barrios. got a bunch of Jets. They have a lot of Just wrong fast guy. players. Hmm? Wrong guy Just for him chosen. to be called Chosen. Yeah, yeah. Chosen Anderson. Yeah, the NFL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, All right, yards Metal World Peace, fire. Okay, <laughs> I like Ron Artest better. Way better. Uh, Ocho Cinco, tough. Fire. Yeah, now that's that, that's respectable. Name yeah, that was OD when he did that. It's a legend. That's yeah. when he became a certified sign and sealed to go. Even Chad Johnson was fire too, though. Of course. Chad what Johnson's about did. Ennis Freedom? Yeah, no. Is that, is that, did he ever play in the NBA? With is that Ennis name? Freedom top five worst name changes <laughs> top of the three. century? It's hundred percent dog shit. Fuck you talking about Ennis Freedom. <laughs> hey, just say cancer, bro. <laughs> just say cancer. Like, Ennis, you went from cancer to freedom. Ah, not moving me. Yeah. I'll be honest. But yeah, no. Ron Artest was, he should stay Ron Artest. Oh, well, though. A meta world peace. And that's going to do it for this episode of the Pick a Side Podcast, episode 281. 
If you guys want to support us now that we're not going live, we don't got super chats. You guys can go over to Patreon. Our Discord is only a dollar, so if you choose the first tier, you'll get into our Discord. And we definitely have to start putting out extra Same episodes me. a month Same on me. Patreon yeah. for everybody. We do need to drop a Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> but if you guys want to support us in that way, we'd highly appreciate it. You guys can follow us on Twitter at Pick Aside Pod, on Instagram and TikTok at Pick Aside Podcast. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.